Hey, yo, man. Welcome to the show. Live in Lake Tahoe, it is the Monty Show. As always, presented by The Advocates, theadvocates.com. Guys, I say it every day. I'll say it again. I'll say it live in Lake Tahoe. If you get in an accident, there's only one place to go, and it's not your insurance company because your insurance company is not looking to do what's right by you, what's best for you. That is The Advocates, theadvocates.com, where you never pay a consultation fee. You never pay a retainer. No, no, friends. You don't pay the advocates until they win your case at theadvocates.com. Good Monday afternoon. Yes, yes. At 4 o'clock Mountain Time, Jay. Yes, yes, afternoons. Do you guys like afternoons? Yeah, let us know what you think. Yeah, because we've we've flirted with this for a long time. Um, you know, like I just, I do like, I have to admit. Yeah. I have to admit. It was nice not to get up at 3.50 this morning. It was nice. I know. It was nice. I know. And I know I'm almost 50 years old. I only have six days to go. Yeah. And then I'm the big 5 you know. So yeah, that's we'll, right. we'll see about that. But good to see everybody. P- appreciate you guys hopping on the show. We have a lot to get to today. Obviously, um, I don't know if you guys saw this story on the Pac-12. This is awkward now. This is awkward. We were originally going to start the show ripping Jackson Mahomes, the brother of you know. Patrick Mahomes, but we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get we have, to that. We have three Later hours. In the program. Yeah, to crush Patrick Mahomes' brother, yes. who's an idiot. But anyway, the point is, this whole thing with the, the Pac-12 is now starting to get awkward. I don't know if you guys saw this today. Out of nowhere, uh, in a holiday week... Such as my birthday week. Such as in like. I think this feels like late night, Friday night. Everybody knows that that at the (laughs) Pac-12 that my quinceanera is coming up on the weekend. So everybody's celebrating my birthday. Uh So, of course, today, of all days, Klyavkok and the Pac-12 chose um, to mention this statement right here today. How awkward is this? Yeah. Um, we we know that the Pac-12 is is in straits, but look at this statement released by the twa- Pac-12 today. The ten Pac-12 universities <laughs> look forward to consummating successful media rights deals in the very near future. Right, based upon positive conversations with multiple potential media rights payer or partners, payers, Freudian slip, yeah. over the past couple of weeks. We remain highly confident in our future growth and success as a conference and united in our commitment to one another. In other words, we've talked about getting a divorce. We're just not sure how it's all going to work out financially and who's paying for the attorneys. Right. I mean, we've kind of figured out how we're going to handle all the kids and the custody battle, but we're not sure divorce pending. Right. That's what this feels like to me when you read this statement. I mean, I, I look at this, Jake. And I cannot, I, the only thing that I can come up with is that the Pac-12, I think, is, is in a death spiral, and I don't think they know how to get out of it. Yeah, I mean, this just feels like, hey, we need to put out a statement to say that everything is fine, even though everything is not fine. It is the classic house is burning down, put up the smoke screen, you know, stuff. Like, that's the behavior we're talking about here. And, and, and I think, you know, we've, as you know, for all those, all of you who listen every day and are with us every single day, you know that we talk about this all the time. And this, just add this to the list of things that the Pac-12 and George Klyavkov have done to put up this narrative that the conference is healthy and in a good place, even though it's not. And, and we know it's not, because if it was, you'd already have a media rights deal. If it was, you wouldn't feel the need to put out its fine statements. You wouldn't feel the need to do press conferences where you talk about back of the envelope calculations, right. <laughs> you know, only the two weeks later have a graph come out from whoever it was. I, I, maybe it was Nielsen or one of the research companies, you know, comes out with this graph that says, hey, actually, George was wrong and he was lying. Students actually do, in fact, want to be part of the Big Ten. Yeah, that like, was that. That was George Klyovkov saying, hey, I haven't talked to any students, not a single one in yeah. it. It's safe to say I've talked to hundreds yeah. who want you know UCLA and USC to leave. Mm-hmm. And then the survey comes out of UCLA students who overwhelmingly said, oh, yeah, we want to be in the same conference as USC. Yes, we want to go to the Big Ten. This is, this is desperation now yes. from the Pac-10. And the thing that worries me here is the Utah Utes are still in the Pac-10. And the thing that concerns me most is this overwhelming 
underappreciation of what Utah athletics is, specifically Utah football. I think in gymnastics, everybody knows what the Red Rocks are, right? I think, yes, obviously, the running use have been wildly under underperforming for several years. This Utah football program has carried the mail for the U for a decade, and I don't think anybody knows that. And I think a lot of it is because the Pac-10 is so dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And I think Larry, Larry Scott obviously was a disaster for this conference. But tell me now today that with any kind of confidence, any of us can say that George Klyavkov is any better of a commissioner than Larry Scott was. Because frankly, Jake, I don't think I can say that. Well, what more has he done? I I mean, literally look at the situation. I I mean, really, quite literally, the only difference between Klyavkov's time and Scott's time is that now Pac-12 offices are not in San Francisco. We've moved offices to save some money, you know, because our conference is burning into the ground. Like, you know, that's been the major difference. And I think, you know, not to be overly negative, but another major difference, obviously, is USC and UCLA choosing to leave. They chose to leave now. They didn't choose to leave in Scott's day. So to me, it's like you're going the wrong direction here. And and we talk so often about, you know, expansion and San Diego State and SMU and, you know, a lot of a lot of the fans and the commenters on the channel, you know, want to bring up Fresno State. And it's like, dude, like they can add these schools. But my opinion now is that even if you were to add SMU, even if you were to add San Diego State, hell, even if you went and added Fresno State, I still don't think that's enough to get you 40 or $50 million or even a media deal on par with other conferences. And that's the problem. I look at this statement, and one small tidbit of this statement I think is interesting. It does say the 10 remaining schools in the Pac-12. So they're clearly going with the Pac-12 branding. Yes, We haven't seen the Pac-10 change yet. So the Pac-12, I'm going to call it that until they change it. The Pac-12 is in a position where even if you add the available schools that are out in the marketplace, I still don't think that that is going to save you. And I don't know. It almost feels like the next, you know, wrecking ball for the conference is, you know, this, this, you know, Oregon, Washington, you know, leaving narrative. I mean, we've been hearing about it for six, eight months now. It's been a while. Like, I would expect an update at some point. And I think this, you know, Oklahoma and Texas leaving thing kind of throws you know, or sort of accelerates that. I, I feel like it almost says, hey, OK, this got taken care of. This issue's gone now. We've got this, you know, resolution here. Now we can look at, OK, does San Diego State want to join here or maybe does Oregon want to leave there? Like it just feels like we're accelerating now. And I don't know what George can do about that. That's the know. problem. Yeah. And I think I look at this comment from Danielle Smith, who says, so do you think it would be wise for Utah to walk away from 300 million what they're getting for research for being in the pack. I actually don't believe that it's 300 million they're getting from the pack uh, for being in research. And second of all, I also think from what I understand, what I've been told, it doesn't mean that they're going to lose that money. That's not what that means. And obviously when you have a powerful group um, of institutions that are together academically, that's not going to change. The thing that changes is your athletic department. And the most difficult part of this is you're in a rock and a hard place. There's nobody that is certifying Utah as a research institution of the highest order that's going to say, oh, well, now they play football in the Big 12. we got to pull that certification. Mm -hmm. There is negotiating to be done on that because I guarantee you, and again, I'll just go on what I've been told because that's what I know. They're not walking away from anything. And that $300 million, Utah on its own, is not getting $300 million per se. I believe that's the increase in money that's come through research. Now, I could be wrong on that. I'm not stating that as fact, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Sure. Uh, But my point is, I don't believe that it's the death knoll for research funding that everybody makes this out to be. I think Utah is one of the finest educational institutions in the entire country. And sure, you can you can talk about the Ivy League or whatever you want. There's no arguing that Utah is a fine institution for higher learning. No doubt about that. Nobody's pulling research funds because all of a sudden you have a, a game every other year in Stillwater. Right. That's not happening. So I think this panic button that we all want to go to when it comes to the 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 Pac-12, I think is 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 overstated. 
I think that it's what you always say about USC and UCLA. Right. I don't know how to break this to you. Nobody's showing up with moving vans and picking up the Coliseum and trailering it out to the Midwest. Yeah, they're not putting it on a long ass <laughs> semi flatbed and taking Rice Eccles out to Nebraska. Like that's not that's not happening, you know. And 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 I know that that sounds like tongue in cheek or like joking, but I think to to a lot of fans, like to a lot of just common observers of this conversation and you know college football overall um i i think a lot of people hear this and like oh like they're gonna move like they're gonna go across the country and change locations and it's like no this is a paperwork you know you know not physical thing like it's much more of a hey where is your advertising money coming from what does a tv deal look like obviously the most the most notable thing is scheduling like there are a lot of those things that aren't tangible if you will they're just these things that we go by that change but what i'm simply saying is that this this whole thing with the pac-12 and putting out these random statements and george klyovkov saying the things that he said over the past however long it's been year at this point i think it's been so far like you can't continue to just do stuff because you think hey like we need to put out a statement to say everything's fine because we're feeling pressure but again i think this goes back to what we've been reporting for several months now that the 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 pac-12 is in trouble financially I mean, they are capped right now from what our sources have told us in the TV industry. The Pac-12 is capped at $25 million a year for seven years. That's the money they've been able to get. And I've been talking to people at ESPN over the last week or so who have said, hey, we're in for $10 million a year. That's it. Because ESPN doesn't need the programming. They want the programming. They Mm -hmm. don't need it. So if they don't get it all, hey, they're going to be fine. Right, you look at what that means. If you're paying ten million dollars a year per, you know, to the to each school, essentially, as it was explained to me, that's a hundred million dollars a year. That's between five hundred and seven hundred million dollars. That's it. That's all that they're willing to do over the life of that agreement. That's not a lot of money. That is a very little bit of money. And if you look at what what we've been told that Amazon's willing to do. Amazon is willing to be their tier one partner, but with the combination of Amazon and ESPN, they haven't yet found a financial formula to break their $25 million mark. And at $25 million per year per school, that's just a non-starter. That's a problem. That is like, that's a huge problem, man. Like you're talking about the total value of that deal being pennies pennies to what the big 10 has pennies like you are you're not near what the big 12 got at 31 million dollars a year at a starting point you're not even in the conversation of that and i don't see how if you are and again i'll go back to san diego state if you're san diego state how do you join the conference for just about the same money you're making now Mm -hmm. because you're not going to come in as a full share from what we've been told this i mean it's just a disaster And now you have this statement being put out today by the Pac-12 where they're saying, hey, the 10 members are united and we're going to have a TV deal soon. (laughs) Well, what does that mean? Well, what I think it means is that, is that like, you know, well, it means one of two things. Because again, the other piece of this conversation we've talked so much about is that the, the, the 10 members, philosophically speaking, are on different pages about what a good media rights deal is and what it's not. And really, to get specific about it, you know, whether a, a deal with Amazon is tier one is viable or not, or whether TV is the right way to go. So when you have Oregon and Washington, let's say, saying that they want TV, but the Arizona schools, just as an example, as you know, the Arizona schools or Stanford or just another school thinks that streaming would be better, that's a problem. And that's why I say like this statement's an issue for for multiple reasons. I mean, first off, financially, you're saying, hey, we're fine. We're going to get a deal done. Second off, you're saying, hey, we're going to get a deal done and everyone's unified and everything's great. You know, we had a round table and it's all awesome, which I don't personally believe. I don't believe, you know, a, a, a week later from our reporting that somehow now Phil Knight and his Nike money all of a sudden are okay with Amazon and streaming. I don't believe that. I don't Seriously. think that that's, that's, you know, realistic. And I'm the guy who says, hey, in business, 
realistic is like the worst word you can use. Like you want to be unrealistic. You want to be as big as you can be. You want to shoot for the stars. But in this case, when you're talking about, as you said, pennies on the dollar, realistic is the ballpark you have to play in. And but so what, what really stands out to you about And, and I'm going to put this statement yeah. back on the board for you. What really stands out about this for, for me is this last sentence here where it says, um, as a conference and united, we are we remain highly confident in our future growth and success as a conference and united in our commitment to one another right because i'll just go back to for you know hey we're just the hacks on youtube right, right? We're, yeah. we don't have mm -hmm. sources not at all when we six weeks ago you know reported that there was division heavy division in the conference i'll just go back to what the athletic reported last week yeah which is three people with knowledge of the discussion said Commissioner George Klyovkov is struggling to find partners willing to pay close to what the league is seeking. Two of those sources said Klyovkov overpromised his members on how many bidders there would be mm. and what dollar amount they would command, a target north of $40 million for school. And again, again, why is why is that number significant? Because Bill Riley at ESPN was touting, hey, we're going to get $50 million a, a year per school. Right. Well, now we know where they got that information, and it was completely false, as we told you at the time. Right. Went on to say, today, it is uncertain whether the Pac-12 will even be able to exceed the $31.6 million average the Big 12 reportedly landed in a six-year extension with ESPN and Fox last fall. And you look at that, that reporting by The Athletic, which is exactly what we reported six weeks ago. Right. And we told you that Oregon, Washington, and the Arizona schools are not on board with a, a tier one streaming partner, which means all of your best games, basketball, football, all of it is streamed with Amazon. Mm -hmm. Is essentially what they're not on board with. Man, I'm telling you, the Pac-12's in trouble. And again, for the record, I'll say what I've said from the beginning of this. Go all in on streaming. Mm -hmm. You're not going to lose that much in the in the the short term, and I think you're going to gain in the long term. And I know that that, you know, hey, you're going to have to get a majority of the people to assimilate quickly to watching everything on stream, but half of us watch everything on stream now. Right. I I I if I'm the Pac-12, to be clear, I'm telling you to go all in with Amazon. They're a tech partner. They're good at what they do. They're going to support you. They are going to push your product. If the NFL is any indication, there are millions of viewers there. I'm telling you, if I'm the Pac-12, Jake, I go all in on it. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, in these type of situations, you have to make a, a, a real definitive decision. You have to just take, you know, put put your foot in the ground and make that cut, as they say, right? Like, just take a direction and go with it and go all in on it. And, and what really stands out to me when you, when you put up that athletic reporting versus the statement is just negativity versus positivity. Like, this statement from the athletic clearly is saying there's division, they're struggling to get money, like things are not good like we got problems and then you go to the Pac-12 statement and it's like oh everything's fine we're cool we're committed to each other in our future and everything's fine and you know we're in a sunflower field together like you're not I'm we, sorry did you say a sunflower I, I did yeah they're, they're holding hands walking through a sunflower field. dodging the bumblebees that's right and, that's right so you, you see know. what I'm saying like the 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 difference is kind of crazy that's I mean it just really stands it, out it is incredible that everything that people in the know are reporting versus what the Pac-12 said today is completely opposite. Yeah. It, it's, it. I don't know where you go. All right, let's get your comments in here. Enough of us, more of you. Um, Tanner Plummer wants to know where Greg Hawkins is and his research institution talk. Uh-huh, yeah. Because I'm telling you, and I don't, I don't know this to be fact, it is very difficult to get good information on the research institution thing. It is, we've asked just about everybody. Nobody has the real figures. Nobody knows penny for penny what each member of the conference gets. Right. And would those deals be terminated if those schools left the Pac-12? Now, frankly, having said that, if that was the case, what, what the athletic director, Mark Harlan, said at Utah... Um, when he was talking about, you know, hey, we're not leaving. Mm -hmm. When he when he was say, here's his tweet where John Kurtz said the Pac-12 had a standalone game on Friday night and talked about how bad the numbers were. And Mark Harlan, you see there, the athletic director at Utah, tweeted back, "We're not leaving." 
Well, hey, is that because if you leave the, the research fundings terminated? We haven't been told that. Right. We haven't heard that, and we've asked. Nobody seems to have a good grasp on that. But I'm going to guess that the presidents at these institutions know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. But I also would guess that Oregon and Washington would have no problem leaving because that, that money is going to be offset by TV money. 100%. Utah can't say the same thing because Utah has, I think, absolutely labored through their time in the Pac-12 to become known, to become respected, you know, to, to really get the respect that, damn it, I think they've taken, not earned, I think they have taken respect by being back-to-back -back conference champions. Now, it had been nice if you'd have won one of these Rose Bowls. You didn't. Right. But, hey, it's still an achievement to get there and one that deserves the football world's respect. But they're not going to get that because nobody's seeing them. Yeah, and I think Utah doesn't do a great job marketing themselves. I mean, that's the that for me oh, is boy, the – is the huge one. That, that for me is the bigger deal. And, and I think that, you know, when I look at the pack versus the Big Ten, certainly, and, and obviously it goes without saying the SEC – I just don't think that there's enough revenue to go around this table, if you will, to put in, you know, the amount of marketing dollars it takes to compete with the Big Ten and the SEC, which, again, take us back to the top. You're going to struggle with recruiting. You're going to like it just is a vicious cycle, as we all know. So that's why I say when we saw this come out an hour before the show, we were like, dude, we got to talk about this like like this has to be a conversation piece. Add it to the to the, you know, the 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 scribe, if you will, of all the things the Pac-12 has said that seemingly just feel false and positive. When well, like I said, we were going to start the show ripping Jackson Mahomes, the brother of Patrick Mahomes, who's kind of a weirdo these days. Which we're still going to do. We're, we're going just, to find you know, We're just not starting. I mean, you, you know. know, I mean, he's a, he's a tics, TikTok <laughs> yeah. star. Right. But then they, star. they tweeted that, you and know, stuff. hey, there's Greg Hawkins, member of the show. He says, do you guys think the increased travel cost plus the alleged Big 12 rule that new members will only get 20 million affects possible defections. Now, that point blank, I was told is not the case. Gonzaga basketball is a very interesting example of this. Mm -hmm. Gonzaga basketball would be considered a full share member at whatever that is for basketball. They would be a full share member with no restriction. That's how much the Big 12 values Gonzaga. Now, juxtapose that to San Diego State, San Diego State's going to come in at a much lower number and have to earn their way. Right. Which makes ladder, sense. Which is why I think they haven't jumped in yet, which is why I think they haven't jumped to the Pac-12 yet. Even though I think if you're San Diego State, the Pac-12 is much less attractive because of their situation. But I think this revenue sharing, this tiered you know, revenue model is, if you get Utah to leave the Pac-12, you can't tell me that the the reigning two-time Pac-12 champion is going to take less money to come to the Big 12. They already we we've already seen that movie in the Pac-12. Yeah. And that did not work out. I do think though to Greg's point, that's one of the reasons people are hesitant to jump. Mhm. Mm yeah, you know, I mean, like I, I mean it, well the whole conversation's hinged on money. I mean, uh, right. I mean like I know that's obvious, but quite literally the whole like every decision you make in the college landscape hinges on money. Okay, you want to fly Delta instead of United? Okay, what's it do to our bottom line? Hey, you want to schedule this instead of that? Okay, what does it do? Like that, like you, like budgeting and money. It's and the WNBA it, not allowing charter yes, flights. Yes, it, yes, yes. Same deal, yes. dude. Same deal, man. Yep. David Floyd, good afternoon. Says, well, I understand you guys are in Utah. Uh, but most Big 12 fans have had horrible experiences with the University of Utah fans, but BYU fans have been awesome. I mean, ask me what day of the week it is, and yeah. it'll be a different answer. I mean, yeah. Utah fans are horrendous and tremendous. BYU fans are horrendous and tremendous. It, it And to each other, they're, it's terrible. It wears me out most of the time. Yeah. But if you're a Utah football fan, absolutely, I think Ute fans are more combative. There is no doubt about that. I think there was a time where, where BYU fans were far more defensive because they were an independent and they were – you know, everybody looked down their nose at BYU. I don't think that's the case at all anymore. Um, I think Utah fans now with the, the demise of the Pac-12 feel beaten up. I mm -hmm. think they feel beleaguered. I think right now they are a lot more weaponized is the word that I would use. So I, I, I just don't know how anymore, how anymore a Utah fan can live in this arrogant headspace that says the conference is tremendous because it's not. Are you talking about Utah? Or are you talking about the whole conference itself? Because I, you know, well, I'm not sure. I, I don't disagree with you on that. And I, I think one of the, the most interesting parts of this, and again, this is just my opinion, 
But I think one of the most interesting parts of this is the conference continues to lie and spin instead of being very honest about its situation, even to its members. I, I, the whole, I think the UCLA situation exposed George Klyavkov for the leader he is not. Mm -hmm. And I think that arrogance, the back of the envelope calculation <laughs> comment, his reliance on Wilner and Kinzano to just chirp his message, and they do. Well, and I think that part of it also, you know, I'm not going to say it hurts Wilner and Kinzano, but I'm just going to say you know oh, what does. you're getting it from does. Wilner and Kinzano. Yeah. And I think that... You know, it's 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 like, hey, you know, Wilner and Kanzano are one of the most reliable sources of the narrative. Like I know, like I found this on Kanzano's Twitter account. He had retweeted it two seconds after the Pac-12 official account tweeted it. So like, I know I can go there, but I also know what I'm not getting, yeah. which is the reality of the situation. And so that's why I say, hey, it, you know, if some fans are if some fans are salty, great. Hey, whatever, dude. Like it just is what it is. Like you're always gonna run into tough guy. To football game you know so i don't think that's like unique to either of these two no not at all i i think you're exactly right all of our college football talk on the monty show is presented by our good friends at barbecue pit stop bbq pit stop.com the best in the business and when you hear barbecue pit stop no matter where you watch this show bbq pit stop.com you know they're the best equipment in the barbecue industry that's not even in doubt whether it's the brand new ironwood xl but it's the service, it's the people. Cause you know, again, Yoder, Big Green Egg, Traeger, absolutely. Flavor Knuckles, Asado seasoning, the best do it all seasoning in the barbecue game. In my opinion, Flavor Knuckles, Asado seasoning, they've got it. But what you're buying into at Barbecue Pit Stop, when you buy that Asado or you buy your Ironwood XL, you're buying into the people because they are tremendous. All of their people are awesome. I cannot tell you how many listeners said, oh, I chatted them up online about making my wings for the Super Bowl. That's exactly what I'm talking about because you can get online service or you can go to any of their five Utah locations, Logan, Layton, Lehigh, the GZ, St. George, and of course on State Street and Murray right across from the mall. Make sure you tell them you heard about it on the Monty Show. And again, you can always shop online at bbqpitstop.com. All right, let's run through your comments here uh, because we do need to get to the jazz. What's up, Jason? Says y'all working overtime. We're trying out this afternoon thing. We're trying it out. We're test piloting, test driving, you know. Because I do want to have a life and I do want to lift and, you know, hey, we're thinking about doing shifting our show full time from three to six. Right now, we currently every day do six to nine a.m., mm -hmm. but we're seriously thinking about doing three to six and we would love your input on it. Do you guys like afternoons more than you like mornings? Like, where are you guys at on that? Yeah. Um, let's see. Greg Hawkins says, LOL, catching random strays from Super Soaker himself. Oh, boy. It's getting real in the comments. Uh -huh. What's up, Ron? McClure says, Utah fans are fine when they come to Frank Cush Field. Okay. I don't disagree with that. Lopes fan Gabe, my guy, what's up? He says, does Tanner, why does Tanner Plummer keep poking at Greg Hawkins about research institution stuff? You already bought it, brought it up in the IG chat, bro. Let it go. Because this is what BYU fan does. BYU fan, and you know what? I got to be honest with you. I think they've earned the right to do this. Uh -huh. If I'm being truthful... I think Utah fan was such an a-hole to BYU fan and treated BYU fan so terribly. Right. Like, and with some, I don't know, justification. Sure. I mean, I believe that they've won the rivalry game 37 years in a row. Right, right. Uh, well, I, Utah it, fan would tell you that. Or actually, it's 130. I don't believe BYU has ever won the rivalry football game. Not one time. Right. And I believe when Jimmer went to, because Jimmer went to Utah, right? But that's what Utah fan does. They poke the bear. They constantly slap down little brother. They look down at their nose. Right. Oh, hey, TDS. How you guys doing down there? Yeah. Hope it's all good. You and the White Salamander. We're good in to see the ya. conference of champions. Hey, we're in a power five over here winning the Rose Bowl. We'll talk to you later. Like, that's how Utah fan is. Uh -huh. So I understand now why BYU fan has their tail feather up a little bit. <laughs> I understand why BYU fan, who's now in arguably the most forward-looking conference, because I think there's a chance that if we get to this super conference model, mm -hmm. that the Big 12 has 30 teams in it. I could see a situation where what I've said for months is the best solution, 
which is the Pac-12 and the Big 12 merge. And when I say merge, the Big 12 absorbs all of those, those schools and all of George Klyovkok and his incompetent staff goes away. Right. And now we have this massive super conference that's going to suck up some other teams in the region as well. Yeah. 25 to 30 teams. I could see that easily. That's the right thing to do, which means it probably won't happen. Correct. But my point is, BYU fan has earned the right to roll with the tail feather in the air and take some shots at, at Utah fan. By the way, the Instagram chat for our membership program is amazing. Might want to think about joining. You should hit the join button right now on your phones, folks, because it is, uh, it's been awesome. Let's see. Big, uh, big read says from Utah... Uh, to the pack is fairly expensive anyway in travel. Not sure it is the, uh, that much more expensive if the four corners go with them. I don't think it's an expense issue. Truly, I do not. I think we need to stop finding excuses why not to. Right. And my question becomes instantly, the what if Utah joins the Big 12? I think you're instantly competing for a national championship because there's not a program in the Big 12 that's better than Utah right now today. Right. I'm a huge believer in Kyle Whittingham, and I don't know what's going to happen with Andy Ludwig and Notre Dame, and hey, listen, I, it doesn't matter. I'm a huge believer in Kyle Whittingham. Utah is a national championship caliber football program. What if you join? What if you win the conference? What if that puts you into the college football playoff, which, by the way, is now expanded? So as a Utah fan, you can sit here and you can flap your lips together about how, oh, the Big 12 and your mom, you can do that, and I totally get it. The Pac-12 is dead. You And I think I could rightly make the argument, you no longer have a seat at the table for winning the Pac-12 championship. We saw that this year because the Utes won it again, and what did it get them? Nothing. Nothing. If they beat USC in the only game that mattered this year, and what happened? USC was still ranked on top of Utah. Yep. It's ridiculous. You're in a conference that doesn't sustain your ability to play in the biggest game every year. Yep. Why do you not want that to change? That's what I don't understand. Well, they're about the Utah conference fans. of champions. There, there's pageantry. It's the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all. Only it's not right. Like. Yeah. Like, they need to come around to this idea, and I just think they haven't yet. Yep. I agree. Uh, C. Kaufman says, I kind of feel sorry for the Pac-12 for having such bad leadership. I don't. You changed it when you fired Larry Scott, yeah. and you hired this buffoon. Yeah, you made your bet. It's time to yeah. it, dude. Absolutely. 100%. Um, Greg Hawkins says, no, I don't, but okay. Let's see. What did Tanner say? Now, we're taking shots at each other. Yeah, we're other going here. back and forth here. Tanner says, uh, Gabe, I just think it's funny how Greg Hawkins thinks that research institutions solves everything. I, I don't, don't think that's I, what he said. I don't think that Greg thinks it solves everything. I think what Greg thinks is that it's an important factor, and, and it is on some level an important factor. I mean, my opinion has always been, though, that I think ultimately the revenue you get from your media rights deal powers the conference it's just the reality of the situation i mean you can have you can be a research institution of higher learning from planet mars and have the best professors ever they're not the one catching the touchdown to win the game that was on fox that budweiser sponsored and no four-star recruit cares who your quantum physics yeah professor like is. you know what i mean they so don't, they it, don't they don't care yeah so it's a factor but it's not like the deciding no, thing listen if you want to be an engineer a doctor a lawyer whatever it is you want to be hey utah's a place for you mm -hmm. if you want to be a national champion football player especially a quarterback or a skill position offensively is utah the place for you no i don't know if it is saw jaron hall getting an awful lot of love at the senior bowl saw puka nakua puka getting an awful lot of love right like you yeah. see BYU skill position players, Zachy Poo, for everything he's not in the NFL, number two in the NFL draft, right? Like you look at Tater's wonderful career, skill position player from BYU. You look at Fred Warner. You like you're you're losing your exclusivity, in my opinion, at, in the Pac-12. You're no longer the school if you want to go to the NFL in Utah, and that's directly related to your ability, in my opinion to be seen and be respected because BYU is on TV a hell of a lot more and in front of a hell of a lot more people than Utah is. And that's not new. 
Yeah. And I don't want to hear about the church or because guys in Brazil, they watch the games now. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. It's because they went independent, they scheduled up, and they got with ESPN. Yeah. By the That's way, it. there are weeks where we can't watch Utah football in this state. How is that possible? Think about that. Yeah. Anyway, all right, a couple more. Uh, Rob McClure uh, says this is pure crazy speculation. Oh, is it? What's crazy and speculative about it? Yeah. Uh, Tyler P says this is such a tired conversation. Well, the Pac-12 needs to act. Yeah. Wait, well, uh, no, and they if did you're act. just tuning in, yeah, if you're just tuning in, why are we talking about this again? Because the Pac-12 put out whatever this is, I hesitate to call it a statement. <laughs> why did they put this out today? That's why we're talking about this. Why did the Pac-12 do this? I have no idea. It makes very little sense. And if somebody wants to explain this to me, please do. Yeah, I think it's just out of pure desperation. I, I I think that it's quite literally that meme we all see on the internet where the house is burning down and the dog is sipping on his coffee. Like what that's this what this accomplish? is, dude. Well, it, it 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 accomplished them. You know, I I feel like for them on their side of the you know conversation, like it accomplishes them feeling like they put out a statement that says the conference is unified and everything is fine and the house actually isn't burning down. That was just the stove boiling over. You know what I mean? Like. That's what I think they're trying to do. But for me, this is just another smoke screen. And yes, Tyler, we talk about it a lot, man. But the reason we're talking about it today is because they just put out a statement. Like, we have to talk about it. And again, I just will say we were going to talk about Utah needing to get out of the Pac-12 today. And they need to get out of the Pac-12. Yeah. If that statement today that the Pac-12 issued, for God knows why... If that's any indicator, yeah, they need to get out. Mm -hmm. They need to get out. Now, I think they need to do it sooner than later. I, I could be wrong, and if you guys think I'm wrong, please do not hesitate to let me know that. Uh, I guess, Monty, one, I'm here, LOL. I I, I guess. Well, we didn't want you to leave. I'm just curious why you think it's crazy speculation because this is what everyone's talking about. Yeah. Uh, Brent Burnett says, outside of the state of Utah, nobody cares about the Utes or Cougars. Get the facts straight. Okay, so do you think it's just all Utahns that sold out Allegiant Stadium for BYU and Notre Dame? Did you see the BYU crowd there? Have you seen the the games where did do you think that's just all Utahns who traveled to the Rose Bowl? Did you see the Utah fans at the Rose Bowl? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I, again, I think because you don't know Utah football, you have no idea where the where the reach of the the Utah football program and the Utah fan base is. Yeah. Saying that nobody outside of Utah cares about Utah or BYU is ridiculous. Yeah. That is that's crazy. Uh Cam Harrison, what's up dude? Says time to retire those Pac-12 stickers. All right. Again, another BYU dig. Yes. Like the billboard Pac-12 country. Yes. Like another BYU yes. dig. Absolutely. Uh let's see Matt Hartley Washington and Oregon leaving for the Big Ten causes issues. Nobody leaves the big, for the Big 12 to start unless a TV deal is in the teens. Could be. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what the money needs to be to get somebody to leave. But do you want to be the, the, the school that's in the conference when the, the day they turn the lights out? No. I don't think you do. And, and I think that this whole conversation for a school that's considering leaving, like, you know, an Oregon or a Washington, it's not just about the now. It's about the future as well. I mean, again, it's not rocket science to, rocket science to project forward to say, yeah, we are going to have super conferences. Yeah, eventually there is going to be merging. There isn't going to be five P5s. That's not, that's just not what the future holds. And, yep. I, and I think that this this what you know, what's tired, what's tired is thinking that the pack is going to survive, because in my opinion, it's not. This is a slow bleed out. This is a we're going to say everything and do everything we can. And it may take five years, but at some point we're going to have to turn the lights off. And it, it, well, I would guess. And again, the statement says they're going to reach a rights deal soon. I would guess when that rights deal is reached, the pack 12 network goes away. Just a guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. If you had a $30 million rights deal, would you have signed it already? Ooh, I have to think you would have. I have to think you would have. Ron McClure again. Running to the Big 12? Why? Zero reasons. Well, let's see. Best basketball conference in the country. Uh, they got multiple spots in the college football playoff. Um, you know. I mean, just on those two alone. Um, my opinion is, from what I've heard repeatedly, I think Gonzaga is very close to joining the Big 12. 
it's already the best basketball conference in the country. I think it's already, I think it's a better football conference in the Big Ten. I don't know if it's as deep. I mean, Oklahoma State was a huge disappointment this year. Right. But you bring in Houston, BYU, Cincinnati. Who knows what Cincinnati is without Luke Pickle? But I think I can make an argument that it's the second best football conference, and there's no argument. It is the best basketball conference. You're making more money in the Big 12 than you would in the Pac-12. You have far more TV exposure. You have far more marketing, advertising, branding opportunities. Are you telling me at Utah that Under Armour wouldn't be happier to see you in the Big 12 than they would in the Pac-10? Come, Come on. on, dude. That doesn't, Come on. That doesn't make sense. Are you telling me that America First Credit Union wouldn't rather be seen? Are you telling me that all of your corporate sponsors, your fan base, you're telling me that your fan base wouldn't be reinvigorated? By joining the Big 12 and leaving the Pac-10. The Pac Come on. I think it, it, if you believe that, I just, I think you're, you're either blind to the reality of the finances of college football or you're just being stubborn. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of stubborn Utah fans. Yeah. I truly do. Um, CKS, have to agree on that. Utah wins the Pac back-to-back, -back, but still second fiddle to Oregon, Washington, and SC. Yep. And it's all branding. Yeah. It's all branding. It's not even and, what happens on the field. And you've been saying this for how long? Yeah. Utah doesn't push themselves. <laughs> Utah doesn't, you know, again, outside, and I think they do a great job on social media, but look at the look at the the old days of BYU following the equipment truck to big games. Yeah. Like, stuff like that, that matters. And then you have these great uniforms, and BYU's got a, clearly has a better uniform deal than, than Utah does, mm -hmm. right? But you have these great helmets. You have, like, you have all this stuff. Oh, by the way, you're winning games. Yeah. You're back-to-back -back Pac-12 champions. Where are you? How is that being marketed? And it's not. We don't, we don't hear nearly enough about anything at Utah. Like the Pac-12 had this best of the West gymnastics tournament. Right. It was affordable and it was sold out with other fans. Yes. It wasn't all Utah fans. I, I can think of that. I look at what BYU does in marketing. Now, again, BYU's got BYU TV. They've got BYU radio. But, totally understand that. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think they have more money, right? Are we really sitting here? Is Utah fan really going to sit here and can see that BYU has more money to work with than Utah? I don't like, think the Eccles family is starting to count their nickels yet. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> Come on this now. isn't a money conversation. This is a, again, this is a, a philosophy conversation. It is. This is a, it is. hey, like, and again, I feel like philosophy is the core issue that the Pac-12 faces. Like, I can sit here and tell them blue in the face and talk about streaming versus traditional TV or whatever, like mediums, but the reality of the situation situation still comes right back to philosophy which is hey some people think streaming's the way obviously we're on youtube we think streaming's the way i agree if i was the pack i'd go all in on amazon and i'd be cutting edge and i'd be trying to be that brand with the position you're in but hey if phil knight doesn't want to do that he's not going to sign a grant of rights that's just the reality of the situation yep nick hines who's a member of the program says anyone who says that pac-10 is fine is not taking an honest look at the situation agreed i agree mckinley cutler's a member of the program says i would love to have the holy war back as a big event oh man. another reason come on now another reason the money that you would make on that alone mike p um who's rocking the colorado avalanche bigfoot there you go uh says zero reasons question mark didn't have one of the big 12's recent expansion teams tcu play for the natty hello now they got their ass kicked but they still showed up who cares still showed up T utah fan do you want that opportunity because you're not getting that in the pac 10 i got news for you and and, and if if usc isn't getting that and arguably they should have if usc's not getting that how on earth did ohio state get into the college football playoff how did the big 10 get half of the college football playoff but isn't this a precise problem for the pack usc is now leaving right yeah. you're 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 a program in usc that's developing that went to that went to the college football playoff that did all these great things like and then you lose to tulane in disappointing fashion and to me it's like cool yeah you lost in disappointing fashion but at the same time i really feel like 
USC had a nice first season under Lincoln. I like. I really you feel think? like they crushed it, and now it's like, okay, you know, we're almost done. But they have one more season in the pack left, and then they head out. Like you're almost done with the pack. You're gonna get to the Big Ten. You're gonna get those Got that Big Ten after coming night. Back. Like, dude, you're in a great place, and that's why I say, like, Mark Harlan can sit here on his high horse or his big chair, whatever the hell you want to call it, and say they're not leaving. But if you're not leaving, you're making a mistake, and that's yeah. not going to change anytime soon. I agree. Utah Jazz coming up here in about 15 minutes. We'll have uh, some live analysis of the ball game. Okay. I don't know why I said it like that. I don't know. Just have fun but with I it. did. Uh, Russell Westbrook update coming up in 15 minutes. We'll start talking Jazz uh, at the top of the hour. Stick around for that. At Brady 4 o'clock. At no four o'clock Pacific, that would be five o'clock. Five mountain o'clock time. Mountain. Uh, Brady Cook says, "I feel like Utah is afraid they're going to lose their research money when they should think about winning a national championship." Listen, the research money is significant. I don't even argue that. Yeah, I don't believe you're losing all of that money leaving the Pac-12. I just, I don't, I don't buy that. I've been told that that's not the case. And again, we'll we'll keep asking that question. And I understand why people don't want to talk about it specifically because I think also I've been told that the Pac-12 is has told their membership not to talk about this, not yeah. to do interviews, and and they haven't. And it's why when you get the athletic director going on local radio, nobody will ask him about it, which I think is a huge mistake. But we'll see, man. Yeah, I, I, I just, Utah deserves better than this. Utah fans deserve better than this. And by the way, if you're a fan of Arizona or Arizona State, this is, we're talking about you too. This is the exact same conversation uh -huh. because Arizona basketball should be in the Big 12. I, I'm telling you now that Arizona basketball, and for those of you who don't know, you Arizona, a player's program. <laughs> it What a dumb hashtag. Excuse me, you almost got it right. It's program, a program. player's program. Thank you, coach. <laughs> um, that's their hashtag and it's ridiculous. But Arizona basketball, now that Sweaty Sean's gone and... Fish is coaching the football team, and things are moving up. To what, though? And, and Are you ever going to be a significant player in the Pac-10? No. You're not. You're not. And Arizona State, I don't know what's going to happen to the football program over the next three seasons. We'll see. But this is pointed at you as well. Court McMullen, good afternoon. Court's a member of the show. Guys, the frame behind you is crooked, and it's driving me nuts. Oh, okay. Do, I mean, do we need to take it off the wall? Does oh, it move? Oh, it does not uncrook it. They, they nailed that thing to the wall crooked? It is crooked. It is crooked. It's not. It's, Dude, it's on there, bro. It's on there, Yeah, that's dude. not coming off, bro. Yeah, and I noticed it earlier, and I tried. I, I mean, I don't know. Sorry, Maybe Court. we could hang your dirty underwear off of it. So it Yeah, looks... I mean, dude, like I can get a cover if you guys want or something, but. I know. See, Court, I don't disagree with you. It, it, it absolutely makes me crazy. Uh, Matt Hartley says, TCU beat Michigan to go to the Natty. Big 12 is better than the Big 10, What is which is massively overrated. Agreed. Thank you. Agreed. That is, a, that is a one. I'm not a Jim Harbaugh guy on any level. I don't believe that Jim is a, is a championship caliber coach, and I don't care. Put him in the NFL. Put him at Michigan. It doesn't matter to me. I don't believe he's a guy that you hire to go win a championship. He's a guy you hire to be very good because mm -hmm. he is. He's very good. But at Stanford, at the 49ers, and at Michigan, what does he do? He wears people down to the bone. Yeah, he, He's just not a good guy to have around. Grinds on you. Yeah, he grinds on you. Exactly right. Sean Mirzinski, my guy, good afternoon. I think the statement was everything is fine. Let's all hold hands. Yeah. Kumbaya, yeah. my lord. <laughs> Kumbaya. <laughs> you guys want me to sing hymns now? Yeah. By the way, football 50 in three minutes. We're talking about this right here. This is where we're all holding hands. Right, right. Everything's is, fine. The house isn't burning down. It's cool. What What fire? There's right. no fire. There's no fire here. I, what? There's no fire? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's remarkable that when you look at this, ooh, there is a nice, cool Tahoe breeze blowing yes. through. Um, when you look at this, it just, it smacks of we're done. And we know we're done. And we all hate each other. But we're going to lie and say that we're all... It's it's like David Koresh is yeah. the one who wrote this. This is my cult. Here is my statement. Please don't burn my ranch down. Yeah. 
That's what this feels like. And the like. problem is, is you should have put this statement out like four months ago or whenever Pac-12 Media Day was at this point. Was it six months ago now or whatever it's been? Like, this is when you, you should have said this. Like, you shouldn't have gone on some rant about how Bro, the Pac-12 are you going to let a, me make a joke about dude, like a serial killer and not say anything? That was a David Koresh joke. Yeah, you know what David Koresh David and Koresh, George Klyovkov have George in Klyovkov. common? George Klyovkov. Yeah, you know what they have in common? They both hold people hostage and people end up dead in both situations. Thanks. People will die. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for your services, George. Appreciate it, bro. It's so true. Dude. It is so true. I, I just don't even know. I don't know what you do. If, if you are a fan, if you are a fan of the Pac-12, I have no idea what you do now. Wait. I don't. Oh, damn. You know what just hit me? I'm going to need you to freestyle a rap in the background while I do football at 50. Can't do it. Sorry. What? I can't do it. It's not my thing. It's not my thing. Wow. We yeah, don't have it. the vibe and music. Yeah, we don't have the music. Sorry, guys. Oh, man. Sorry. This is what it is, That's man. a bummer. Football 50, 10 of the hour, every hour on the Monty program. The Monty. Uh, is presented by our good friends at Papa Murphy's Pizza. Make sure that you use the promo code MOTC25 to get 25% off your purchase of $25 or more at Papa Murphy's Pizza. Awesome to see everybody sending us pictures of all of your Papa Murphy's Pizza that you ordered for the Super Bowl. Way to go. Don't forget the Heart Baker Pizza. By the way, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? I don't know. Yeah, I'm still planning. You a, so you're going you're, you're gonna to be a gift buyer? Maybe. Maybe some flowers, card. I don't know. Some D? Okay. What? So I meant diamonds. I'm not, dude, I'm not even in town. I meant diamonds. I'm not even in town. What's that got to do with giving a girl diamonds? Uh -huh, right. I'm just asking. Right. That's Anyways, what you meant. Maybe you can send her a heart baker pizza from Papa Murphy's Pizza. Okay. Where do we go here? Do we go with Aaron Rodgers in the dark? Yes. Is is that where we go? We've got to play this video for you guys because, again, I don't even know what you what you say about. Look, Pat McAfee is a stud. Yeah. I mean, we should just get that out of the way now. And really, we should lay this out because we have last week's video where Aaron Rodgers is talking about being in a cave and, you know, going full isolation so he can make a decision on his future, you know, so he can contemplate whether he needs to make $60 million or whether he needs to you know, retire and, you know, actually furnish the, the cave that he's going to spend four days in. So but speaking of hostage situations, yeah, because that's what this is. Yeah. Thoughts and prayers up to everybody in green Bay. Come on. Cause Aaron Rodgers has taken the entire organization hostage because Aaron Rodgers, and we should play the video. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers is, is going dark and, I don't even know how you, like, bro, it's four days mm -hmm. in total darkness, and I need to understand it. That's a real thing, 100%. And that's why I think it's going to be important um, to get through this week and then, uh, you know, to, uh, to, uh, to take my, uh, you know, my isolation retreat and just to be able to contemplate all things uh, my future and then, uh, and then make a decision that I feel like is... It's best for me moving forward and in the highest interest of my happiness and then uh, and then move forward. What's isolation retreat? We're just going into a cave. Are you not going to talk? You're not going to speak one of those things? Yeah. Is it just you in there? Ooh. And if you're just in there alone, do you know how many days you're in there? Are you taking an iPad, a book? Are we able to reach you? What? Is there good it's, uh, it's four nights of uh, complete uh, darkness. What? You go to Alaska? Not Alaska. No, I've been to Alaska. That's a beautiful state. <laughs> what what so that was last week Aaron Rodgers said after the Super Bowl taking this ass into the deep woods and he said that on PMS Aaron Rodgers Tuesday that's right and he's going to bring some deep with him some deep woods off I would right, assume right four nights in total darkness and quiet isolation no sound just you in that ass yeah in the dark right and apparently that may have changed a little bit. Aaron Rodgers going into his darkness retreat starting today. What else do you know? Yeah, so I was told Monday to Thursday is his darkness retreat. Um, and then I saw he's coming on your show Tuesday, which is tomorrow. Um, so maybe he's doing your show from the darkness, or perhaps he's delaying the darkness for a day or so. Um, oh. The timeline is unclear, but I was told imminent darkness coming, decision for Rodgers looming. Uh, and then all sorts of different ways. So 
basically the way it was explained to me, and I know we talked about this in the past, was he will tell them what he wants. He will tell them where he wants to go, whether it's with them, whether it's back into the darkness of, or I guess the light of retirement, or to another team, and they will accommodate and facilitate him. So if he wants, if he tells them, like, hey, the Jets are my team, they will say, okay, we will now work with you to work on a trade with the Jets. That- so let me get this right. <clears throat> Please explain this to me. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so, so, so you do Pat McAfee every Tuesday. Pat McAfee show. You do Credit PMS in show. the light every Tuesday. In the light. In the light, right? And then last week you said that this week you were going to do this darkness retreat. But then Friday of last week you said now that over the weekend of Friday of last week you're going to shift it because you want to do you know Aaron Rodgers Tuesday on PMS. Does that cover it? So last Friday for this Tuesday for last Tuesday. And stuff. And shit. I, I mean, you know, I I can't Dude. keep up. All I know is Aaron Rodgers at some point is going to spend four nights in total darkness and isolation to figure out if he wants to be a great By backer. the way, Aaron, hear me out. Uh, Aaron, 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 you and me. Does it piss you off that Patty Ice Mahomes has two rings and you only have one, and he did that in five years? By the way, does that Aaron, bother you? Aaron, nobody wants to be a Packer, including you. Yeah, <laughs> like nobody. Yeah, he's, come on, guy. The Jets have already inquired. Come You've on. inquired with them. He's out, right? Like this is Bro. so much drama in the LBC just for Aaron Rodgers. Why? What this guy? And again, I know this always pisses people off. He's average. Yes. He's an average ass quarterback. He's not special. He's not unique. All oh, about money. Hey, on the money show, you guys said he won the MVP two years in a row. He's money no in the Chad Henney, but he'll do. I mean, Chad Henney retired today. <laughs> I you know. pay that yeah. man his respect. My bad. Sorry. But hey, Him money his show. Light. Hey, money show. You guys said he won the MVP, and he's average ass at that. Yeah. He's a heartbreaker of Hollywood starlets. His family hates him. I hate him. Bears fans hate him. Nobody likes Aaron Rodgers. So go to the Jets and end your mediocre career with a mediocre team who doesn't win anything. Yeah. That's what I hope he gets out of the darkness because the last thing that I want, <laughs> the last thing that I want is Aaron Rodgers to go into the cave of doom. The darkness. Hang upside down off a ceiling like a bat because that's what I envision this. Have you thought about this? So Aaron Rodgers says he's going on a darkness retreat. Right. Four nights, total isolation, complete darkness and silence. Right. Tell me that that dude and his fonts are not hanging off of some cave ceiling off of what do you call that? Uh, uh, what do you call the thing uh, in Iraq? No, what, the thing that hangs uh, stalactite? Yeah. A stalactite. Right. Tell me he is not. It's like hanging from a stalactite in a cave, drinking ayahuasca, being like, do I want to be a Packer? Do, do I want to be a Packer anymore? Like, that's what I have an envision. And and dude's bait and tackle is just swinging in the breeze from the stalagmites and tights. And stuff. Isn't that how you get Lyme disease? I Why are you going? Why are you doing this? Just stop. stop. You're not hip. You're not cool. You're not that guy, bro. But he does look like a yoga instructor. Oh, a little ponytail. Yeah. Like he does look like a, a yoga instructor yeah. who sweats a lot and is very hairy. I agree. I agree. <laughs> the darkness. I feel better. Good. I, you should. I feel like that was cathartic. I feel like I just came you out of the darkness retreat. You exercise some demons. You know, like. <laughs> with David Koresh and them sinners. Oh, my God. <laughs> Aaron, this is Aaron Rodgers holding people hostage, dude. Yeah, it like is. that's what this $60 is. Sixty million dollars. Holy Billy says he's gonna retire and become a shaman in Brazil. There you go. No, my guess is, you know what, Aaron Rodgers? How classic would this be? Aaron Rodgers will retire and start making baby babies with Jizzy. Would that not? Because he Bro, looks like the MMA in his Birkenstocks. In his Birkenstocks. Yes. Tell me that he doesn't go to Jizzy's house, run some sage everywhere, and then he just gets all the way in that. Done him Kyrie vibes. Does Aaron Rodgers have sex while wearing Birkenstocks? Bro, I, that's not a thought. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, you know, he, he can save that part of the conversation for the darkness, if you know what I mean. Are you a socks on or socks off guy? Socks off all day. Socks I'm, off, bro. I've been known to be a socks on guy. Dude, come on, man. It just depends. Like, if I'm into bed, I'm usually. I mean, are we talking carpet or tile floor? Because, you know, traction oh, matters. Tile. But who has tile floors in their bedroom? Don't you have an area rug then? I guess. I don't know, I don't anyway, know bro. Anyway, um, you know. 
Yeah. And Morris says, any uh, promo code for the barbecue pit stop? Just tell him Monty sent you. Yeah. You heard about him on the Monty show. They'll hook it up. Yep. Sam J says, thought grass was on rollers and was outside most of the time. This, Dude. The grass at the Super Bowl. We're probably going to have to talk about this now. Yeah. The grass at the Super Bowl. Guy, they specially grew that grass. In Scottsdale. And they were like, oh, this is a stuff, bro. That's the worst field ever. Now, on the regular, they have the, I don't know how many people know this or care about it. At State Farm Stadium, do you guys know they have a motorized field? They roll it in for the games, paint it, get it ready, all that. Then they roll it outside so it doesn't die. So grass needs sunlight. They have it on a motor and it Unlike just Aaron rolls Rogers. out. Unlike Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. They just pour a bunch of ayahuasca on the field and they roll it outside. Right. And that's they are, a true story. They are one of two organizations in the league that have the system. The Raiders with Allegiant now have it. Because and, you need it yeah. because it's hot and it will die if it's outside full time. Yeah. So, you know, there you go. I, I just, yeah. Okay, Mike Maples. What's up, Mapes? He says, A.A. Ron is going to the Texans. LFG. Keep dreaming, bud. Well, they have a draft pick to trade. Did you come to that? That conclusion after your four days spent you know, in the darkness. Yeah. Uh, Tanner says, you guys seem more relaxed in the afternoon, Mott and Jake. Yeah. You know, we've had time to reflect on our performance. We've just come out of the darkness. You know, uh, Brady Cook, a member of the program, says Aaron is a complete darkness feel like a joke. Man, it does. <laughs> Aaron in complete darkness seems like a skit. Yeah. Do you think he made it up? That he's going to spend it in darkness? Pictures or it didn't happen? Yeah, 100%. I think if you rolled up to the curb, all the lights would be off and he'd still have the TV on. Just saying. You can, So on a darkness retreat, do you, no, he's do you go saying, to a cave? No, he's saying he he's saying that it's in like a basement. No. That's where no, he does No, this. no, 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 no. Yeah. Did he say that? Yeah, I believe he said that. I, 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 on okay, now you're going to make week, me look this up. It, hey, asshole, it's not a retreat if it's in some... Hey, well, me and Jerry are just going to go in his basement and put foil over the windows, and we're going to try and figure out what these UFOs are shooting down are. And we're going to call it a darkness retreat. It's yeah. not a retreat in a basement, you jerk off. Well, I'm are pretty sure it is. Yeah, let no, me look it up. Not. No, you need to be in a tropical country. You need to be, where's Greg Hawkins? You need to be in a cave in the Philippines, in the Maldives, or as you say, the Maldives. The Maldives. <laughs> Jacob, the Maldives. He's like the Maldives Island. You need to go to the Maldives or you need to go to Burma or wherever you go. Find a cave and be in the dark. That's all I can say. Because I there's you can't, this is not in a basement. I'm telling you it is. Okay. I'm Dude. looking it up. I'm looking it up, but I'm if pretty it's sure basement, it's, in a, it's in a basement. If it's in a basement, I should get to bag slap him. Well, like we should do the 007, yeah. sit him naked on a slatted chair and just bag slap. Him. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm reading this Stop. SB Nation article and in the headline of it is darkness retreats have been a practice for thousands of years. Spending extended periods in darkness is a common practice in certain branches of Tibetan Buddhism and bone bon, a religious offshoot of traditional Buddhism. Great. So go be with Buddha. Like go, go to like the mountains, dude. Like well, I've seen the dark night rises or begins yeah. where he goes to the mountains and becomes like killer crazy. Aaron, go, please ride a goat up a hill. I don't care. But if you're doing this, if you're just turning off the lights in your basement, it's dude, definitely not a cave because it straight up says right here, he will, but will be attending a quote darkness retreat where he hopes to gain some insight in sensory deprivation, which a, means the darkness retreats being held on ninth yeah, street. Dude, in Racine, like you're going to be in a quiet room. That's <laughs> like sound Peru. Like, you know what I like? Come on, dude. It's going to be on Kennecott drive in, 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 uh, you know, Tidewater, Wisconsin. Yeah. yeah. And you're just going to be in a basement. Yeah. And we'll unplug everything. I mean, I got a fish tank down there with a nightlight. I hope that won't bother you. Like, that's what this feels like. Yeah. Stop. Aaron, he's a fraud. I did not know this was in a basement. Yeah, it's in a building. It's in like a basement or like a room. Stop. You know, like, yeah. Stop. Yeah, dude. Mike P says, I think Mrs. Monty was into feet, though. I don't know, Mrs. Dude. Monty loves her some toe jam. Let me just, she hates feet. Like, she, not only is Mrs. Monty not into feet, she hates feet. Okay. Sorry to... Sorry to ruin okay. your darkness retreat, sir, because it sounds like you're in a basement. Okay. But, you know. Yeah. That's, there you go. Yeah. All right. Football 50 to the hour every hour. You probably went a little too you far. Know, uh, you know. It's uh, tough. Presented by the Heart Baker Pizza. 
When you get a Heart Baker pizza from Papa Murphy's, it's like you're our Valentine. Because we're giving you our heart. Our fresh pepperoni and cheese-covered heart to take and bake however and whenever you'd like. But then you give our heart away? So does that make us your Valentine? Wow, love is hard. Thank goodness we're pizza. So whether you need a Valentine or need to be one, get what you need this Valentine's Day with a Heart Baker pizza from Papa Murphy's. And it's in her face. Dude, he's going to use a retreat company. Clifton, New Jersey. In Clifton, New Jersey. I'm not saying this is, they're speculating that this is the one. But I'm, if this is the one, <laughs> and look, it's even in a residential neighborhood. Look, I'm Ted Stevens, the president of Hermitage Tad, Retreats. Tad, please. Tad. I'm Ted Stevens, the president of Hermitage Retreats. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers is coming to my house. We're going to lock him in our, in our apocalypse bunker for four days and four nights. That's what this feels. That's not a retreat. Yeah. Get out of here. Hey, that's what it here. is, man. Make sure you use the promo code Monty25. Now I'm all in on this. Yeah. Now I am all in on the Aaron Rodgers hey. darkness retreat. Yeah. I mean, the, the, I'm all the, in on it. the darkness retreat, sens sensory deprivation thing is kind of exploding. So I'm sure we'll hear more about this. This guy's a total fraud. Okay. Hey. If it comes out that this isn't, and I'll even limit it. If this isn't on the Pacific Rim in some sweaty ass country where it's humid <laughs> as hell, this guy's a fraud. You mean Vietnam? Like, look, I, Nam, I don't know. <laughs> it's Vietnam. <laughs> I don't know where this should be. It should not be Bangkok. in Ted's basement in New Jersey. <laughs> that Mr. New Jersey. No, yeah. stop it. Use the promo code MONTY25 to get 25% off your purchase of $25 or more, including the Heart Baker pizza. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. What did you get me from? By the way, are you getting me a birthday gift? Maybe. I'm your birthday I'll think gift. about it. Yeah. My presence is your gift. My presence. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Um, Aaron Rodgers, according to ET, has been doing too much ayahuasca recently. Agreed. Heard. Heard, dude. Heard. Yeah. Facts. Absolutely. Uh, Tanner says, can we talk about the Super Bowl now? Okay, real quick on the Super Bowl. Yeah. Did the official steal the Super Bowl it from It was Philly? holding. He held. Facts. That was holding, bro. By the book, that's holding. Now, I'm not saying that's a good call. You shouldn't have called it. Shouldn't have called it. That's a that's that's in context. Like that's the only holding penalty of the game. Okay, so let me ask you something. Let yeah. me ask him. Yeah. Yep. Should then we go back and review every penalty they they did not call then? No. That was a terrible call. Yeah, it was. They it should was. not have called. And to your point, that was the only holding call of the game. So let me get this right. Yeah. We went through like three quarters and three and three quarter quarters. In a Big Mac, yeah. and you're telling me that you didn't you didn't make one holding call, and then with the game on the line after the calls that freaking Kansas City got in the AFC Championship game, you're gonna make that call mm. at that place in that time in the game. That's terrible. Yeah, that's absolutely deplorable. You can't do that. Yeah, you just can't do that. And listen, I think they lost. The Eagles lost the game because they couldn't get to Patrick Mahomes. That's plain and simple. If we're looking for a reason, yeah. the offensive line and the schematics that Kansas City rolled out to protect Mahomes, that's why Kansas City won the game. Yep. But let me be very clear. You cannot make that call in that moment, in that place on the field, in the Super Bowl. Yeah. You cannot throw the flag on that. It's a holding. I think everybody agrees with that. You didn't call one other holding the entire game. It's a ticky tack holding. That's the problem. You can't like, do that. You know, like, and you know, it just spurs the, you know, the the burned in memory of Nikel Roby Coleman, you know, annihilating Buddy on the sideline that didn't get called. Like, it it, it brings <clears throat> back all the hey, this wasn't called, this was called. You know, the Chiefs were destined to win it. Like, it just it furthers that whole thing. And, and I agree with what everyone's saying. The problem is, is the way the free agency looks for the Eagles. They're probably not replicating this team again next year. That's the sad part. And listen, I I think that Eric Bieniemy. this is, to me, this is the story of the day. The Chiefs were terrible in the first half. But it turns out they were they were holding quite a bit back offensively. Eric Bieniemy, I think on Wednesday in film study, isolated a play from earlier in the season 
and used it to show how the Eagles routinely covered the sweep and protected against jet sweeps. He found that play throughout the playoffs, throughout the regular season, and he isolated that. He stood up in a defensive meeting and said, here's what we're going to do. And that's why you got those, hey, and man, we're going to stop the, the jet sweep and we're going to fake back to the pylon that led to two touchdowns. Yeah. That's why they won the game. And in my opinion, Eric Bieniemy, this nonsense about him not being a play caller, he absolutely is highly and heavily involved in the design of the offense. And he and Andy Reid pretty much jointly call those plays in Kansas City. Yeah. Eric Bieniemy belongs as a head coach in this league. And it's a little ridiculous if you're going to roll out and tell me that there's not some kind of bias. I don't know what it is, but Eric Bieniemy will either be the next coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, which would be sad in my mind, yeah, or somebody's going to hire him. He should get a job. That situation alone should get Eric Bieniemy a job. But let's be very clear: that holding call cannot be the flag cannot be thrown. You hadn't thrown a single holding call the rest of the game, yeah. And there were obvious holding calls you missed, and then you chose to throw it in that moment. And again, I'll go back to the AFC Championship game. You can't give them three crucial calls in that game, and then, you know, come on. Yeah, no, come I on. agree, dude. I agree. Come on. Um, let's see. The refs got a bad rap for me all the time. Just didn't see how it was. That one incident really had anything to do with either team's ability to win or lose a game. Okay, that's just you, you're 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 Come smoking on. ayahuasca, dude. Come on, that yeah. you, you're crazy. Be better. That you're crazy. That that is that play was absolutely and, and Brent also, dude. Did you watch the game? That call didn't matter in terms of outcome, but overturning the fumble TD was a big deal. So the fumble TD where it wasn't a catch. Yeah, never had clearly possession. Clearly not a catch. Yeah, never had possession. I, I hate talking about officiating. I really do. Ivan Morales, what why it happened with with these teams finally leave? Why will these teams finally leave? Every day this drags out they are in worse and worse position. I think you're talking about the Big Ten or the Big Twelve. Yeah. Rather, I would agree. Matt Hartley says Eagles defense went on Rogers retreat for the second half. Agreed. They were in darkness. I think the scheme that the Chiefs rolled out, they were a different offense in the second half. Totally. And again, much to your point, I think Patrick Mahomes broke their spirit with that long run. Yep. Because they were, the Eagles dominated the game early and then just didn't execute in the, in the third and fourth quarter. Yeah. Really, they controlled the clock in the third quarter and couldn't score the touchdown. That was, to me, that was, that was the and big It just deal. never felt like they got going offensively. Like, they were scoring. They were, they, they had that bomb, and they were doing some things, but it never felt like, you know, you were just dominating. Like, it did, you know what I mean? Like, Jalen had to run a lot in the second half to get them first downs. Like, he had to make a lot of plays with his legs, and, and I just kind of felt like, man, like, they're just, I, I even said to you at one point, it feels like they should be up, like, 20 in this game, yeah. and they're up, like, three. And listen, I think the thing with the officiating... I, I don't believe that officiating wins or loses games. But that call feels like a taint at the end of that game. I, I don't know how you get around that. Sure, we can point to all this other stuff. We can point to, you know, again, the play calling, the scheme, the design. The, yeah. That's why they won. That call cannot happen. And it just feels like it tainted the end of that game. Yeah. That's what it feels like to me. But, yeah, I mean, but, I think I think we all agree on that 100%. Like, I think it's it's unfortunate that... And, and listen, we disagreed, like, during the game. I felt like this was one of the best Super Bowls I've seen in a long time. Like, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't know where it stacks up all time, certainly. I mean, that's hard to answer. But, you know, I... I yeah, I, I think it was better than last year's. I think, you know them going back and forth close game like that's what we were looking for and and that's what we got i felt like it delivered bart buckus says stop with the officiating stop it i but i want it to be better am i the only one that thinks it has to be better it has to be it, nfl officiating you can't have the issues you've had the thing with officiating that you can't get away from is it's not about necessarily the call that was made on the field right so like you know Brent referencing the overturned fumble or, you know, fumble picks, uh, fumble recovery touchdown play that they took away, right? Like, or these other plays. It's not about the call you made on the field. It's about the call that ends That's up right. being made. And I think too often in, in the NFL, there are plays 
that we can all sit around and watch on the TV and say, yep, this is this is what that play should have been. This is the result. Yes. Yet they find a different result. And I don't know what they're looking for. And, and I really, you know, we were talking about it in the membership group, you know, the Instagram group that you get with our membership, $9.99 a month. Please, please join. We were talking about it. And a lot of people agreed. Hey, like you should be able to challenge no calls. You yes. should be able to challenge yes. like basically anything that happens in the game. And I really don't like this concept that you can't challenge under whatever it is, two minutes, I think it is. That's everything is booth review, like initiated from the booth. I don't like that. I don't like taking the control out of, you know, Andy Reid's hands or whoever's hands, whatever right, coach, right. you know, Sirianni. Like, I don't want to take the power out of these guys' hands. I want them to play the game. It's like in the NBA. The NBA is even worse. The NBA, you challenge, you win the call, you still don't get your challenge back. That's as caveman as it gets. And to me, I'm just sitting here saying, like, dude, like, at some point, the NFL has to catch up on this because we can't keep talking about, oh, well, Patty, he's only a Super Bowl champion. Not that you're saying this, but I think a lot of people are. Hey, he's only a Super Bowl champ because he got a holding call that benefited the team. They're like, it, that's not true. Like, Patrick Mahomes, as I said yesterday on our little preview, like, finds a way to win games. He is a gamer, the true definition of a gamer, playing on one leg, like, doing everything he needed to do. And it's just a shame that this is what we have to talk about instead of talking about what I thought was one of the best Super Bowls we've had in years. The field, I just think, I didn't think it was, and you and I disagreed about this at dinner last night. We went to this amazing dinner at the Hard Rock in uh, South Lake Tahoe. And we were sitting there after the game and, and you said it's an instant classic. I didn't think it was an instant classic. It, to me, it's embarrassing the field was in that, that shape. Mm -hmm. Like that was hard for me to watch. And yep. we're going to get to Russell Westbrook and the Jazz here in just a minute um, on the Monty Show presented by the Advocates, Utah, advocates.com. Uh, or no matter where you are, you can always find them at the advocates.com, the best injury attorneys in the business. They never charge your retainer, no consultation fees. And listen, when somebody hits you in your car or if you're on your motorcycle or your bicycle and somebody's distracted, they run a light, they blow a stop sign, or they just drift into you and knock you off your bike. You deserve to be compensated for that because you did not deserve to be in an accident, yeah. but you do deserve an advocate. Get to theadvocates.com. Make sure you tell them you heard about it on the Monty Show. Um, the field is humiliating, and it, it's the biggest game of the year. Not only did you have a humiliating turf, you had a terrible call that I think had a huge factor in deciding the game. I, I just thought the whole thing felt bad. I thought... The first half was was not great football. It, it just was not. The second half, I can't help but think the end of that game was defined by the call. And the sad thing today is we're not talking about the fact that this was the first Super Bowl with two black starting quarterbacks. We're not talking about the fact that Jalen Hurts put in one of the greatest quarterback performances in a Super Bowl of my lifetime. Uh -huh. We're talking about turf. We're yeah. talking about officials. We're talking about like the, the catch on the sideline that everybody says wasn't a catch. It was clearly a catch. They get it right on the review, and then they throw that flag, and I just can't get over it. Yeah, I can't get over the fact that you threw that holding call. It was the only holding call of the game. Yeah, You, you just can't do that, in my opinion. I, I, I'm i probably making too much of it, but hey, it is what it is. Jazz, um, this Russell Westbrook situation is kind of cray-cray-cray. Uh-huh. You know, it, it's interesting where this Jazz team is. Tonight, obviously, they're in uh, Indiana taking on the Pacers. Jazz up 14-10 uh, early in that game. We're past the trade deadline now. I feel really good about what the Jazz did Thursday and leading up to Thursday. I feel like they got much better. They put themselves in a much better position. I'm a little disappointed Kelly Olynyk's still here. I'm a little disappointed that Jordan Clarkson's still here. But, hey... It is what it is. And now you're in a situation where you have this Russell Westbrook situation happening. And Jake, I think you have to ask yourself, how long do you let this go on? I mean, I, I sit here and I say it should already be decided. I, I mean, once again, I'm sitting here having to talk about that, that Danny Ainge and Ryan Smith are giving Russell Westbrook the option. It's not up to Russell Westbrook. Can we get that straight? It's not up to Russell Westbrook. But it's up it, to the Jazz. I, I actually think it is up to Russell Westbrook because I think if Russ says, I want to be here, 
and the Jazz don't want him here, okay, they're going to buy him out. If he says, I want to go to a playoff contender and the Jazz don't want him to do that, I think you're going to have a malcontent on your hands. Like, I think Russell Westbrook is largely going to ter- determine what happens here. He's getting his money either way, right? Russell Westbrook is in control of this situation. I was told this morning that Jazz would like to wrap this up sooner than later. And they would like it done in hours, not days. I don't think Russell Westbrook is a guy that's going to work on anybody else's timeline but his own. And I was also told this morning that I don't feel like now that Russ is ever going to play for the Jazz. I think it is. I had it at 90-10 last week after, you know, texting back and forth with a source of mine today. I actually think I would put it much more at about 95 and 5%. Russ is going to go to the Chicago Bulls or the Miami Heat. Uh I think he goes to the Clippers third. Um, There was a report I saw that I was chatting up a guy about and, you know, that Russ doesn't want to be full time at the Staples Center anymore or excuse me, at Crypto.com Arena anymore because there's some hangover there. A lot of people think that makes sense. But I also think that Billy Donovan is putting a hell of a recruiting pitch to Russell Westbrook. And when you're the Chicago Bulls, and trust me, as a long-suffering Chicago Bulls fan, I'm pretty certain they're in a playoff spot right now in the East. They are out of a playoff spot. Excuse me. Excuse me. They lose the tiebreaker with the Raptors. Russ has a chance to go in there and really make a difference. If you are the LA Clippers... You're desperate for Russell Westbrook. You don't have a point guard on that roster. You need Russ. Russ is going to determine where he signs. Russ is going to determine when he signs. Yeah. And as long as that happens by March 1st, I think you're in the driver's seat here if you're Russell Westbrook. I think the Jazz have so much going on right now with the All-Star game, and I think they just want this headache out of their hair, Mm -hmm. frankly. If I'm the Jazz, I'm trying to get this buyout done before Wednesday. If we get through tomorrow and they still haven't bought him out, I think it's a mistake. You can't, in, in my opinion, I don't know what you think. Yeah. I don't think you can go to the break with him still on your roster. Yeah, and again, I, I, my opinion on this is, is you know, I, I think it's a mistake to say to Russell Westbrook, hey, like, do you want to play here? Or do you, you know, what do you want to do, Russ? What is your feeling on the situation? You know, do you just want to be bought out? Do you want to play here? What is the, what is the, what's your opinion? What do you want? I think that's a mistake. I would be saying, I want to give all my reps to Colin Sexton. I want to give all my reps to every young guy that I can get on this damn team right now, right? Like you have a bunch of young guys. You kept Ochai, you kept Sexton, you've got Laurie, obviously. Like you've got this group of guys that need the reps. And to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense to to run Russell Westbrook out there. And I know we've heard, you know, the Jazz have told Russ, you know, hey, if you decide you want to play here, we can't guarantee you a starting spot. Like we're going to prioritize the young guys. But what really at the end of the day are you doing? What really is your goal? And I always bring it back to this when we talk about Jazz decision-making. What's your goal? Is your goal to make the playoffs and go as far as you can this year? Okay, well then, yeah, I'd probably want to try and keep Russ in this particular situation because he was already coming off the bench in L.A. He knows that role. It's a good fit, whatever. But to me, that's not your goal this year. Your goal this year is to develop these guys and specifically develop the three guys on this team that are probably going to be here, which is Lori, Ochai, and Colin Sexton. Those three guys are probably going to be here. So to me, it's like it just doesn't make a lot of sense to keep Westbrook in the fold. You got your first-round pick. You made the deal. You made the transaction. Get his ass out of here. Let him go to the Bulls or the Clippers or wherever he wants to go. That's why... I like I'm not saying that they're some somehow making this huge mistake. But when I say it's a mistake, what I mean is just that you're wasting time here. You're allowing a player to dictate to you when in my opinion the great organizations in the league dictate to the player and allow the player to handle it afterwards. I the only thing I I say about that is I don't think you can have a Russ meltdown. That's the only thing that worries me. I mean, I think it would be a bad look for the Jazz to send him home. Uh anything like that. I think the idea that Russ and Jazz sources at the Jazz have told me the Jazz, when they met with Russ, they straight up told him and his people, hey, listen, you're not going to start here. You're not going to come in and be one of our 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 first options. Mm -hmm. You're going to come in and be a bench scorer for us. That's what we would use you for. And I'm told that Russ didn't react one way or the other. He simply ingested that information 
he's, he's going to get a buyout here. They are not going to let this linger on. From what I understand, they're going to buy him out. And I think that, again, I think Chicago and Miami are the two likely. I think the Clippers are a distant third. It doesn't make sense to me that he would go to Miami over Chicago. In Chicago, he can be a hero. Adding Russell Westbrook to DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine, dude, Yeah. now you're cooking with gas. Their weakness in Chicago is always going to be Nikola Vucevic. He just is not a good defender, and he's an average three-point shooter uh -huh. who takes way too many threes, in my opinion. You have everything you need. If you had Russ on that team and Billy Donovan and Russell Westbrook have a relationship, I think that's where he ends up. Because he knows if he goes to Chicago, it's a major market. He's going to be on TV a lot. And he's going to be the reason that they get to the next level. Because I also think he's one of those guys you and I talk about a lot. He, he's on a prove-it deal now. Yeah, he's, he's not playing for this year. He's playing to earn a job next year. That's what he's doing. 100%. Because he'll be a free agent in the summer. Yep. If he goes to Chicago, I think Russell Westbrook has a really good opportunity to really show out. He has a really good opportunity to say, hey, I made a big impact. We won a playoff series. You know, they were in a, out of the playoffs when I got there. They finished it home court advantage. Like, whatever it turns out to be. What he won't do is go there and be a pain in the ass. Mm. That I don't think he will do. I know that he and D-Row know each other from L.A. Like, I think that's a really good fit for him in Chicago. I think that's where he ends up. Yeah. I think he has a tremendous run with them, and I think he signs a multi-year deal next summer. I just don't see any way he wears the jazz note. Yeah, I really hey, don't. And, I'm, and, and like I said, I mean, obviously I'm with that. I mean, I'm 100% I'm in support of just buying the guy out and letting him go and do what he needs to do. I, 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 and I agree, the last thing you want to do is let this thing linger. And, and I'm glad to see that the jazz are, you know, kind of saying, hey, we're not looking to let this linger. But I don't know. I guess to me, I'm just a big fan of saying, okay, Look, man, like this is where we're at with you. We we have a young core. We're we're gonna play these guys. And hey, if you're happy to sit on the bench, I guess that's what it is. But I just think that you're you're like I literally would say to Westbrook, if I was Ryan Smith, hey, if you're gonna be on this team, you're gonna come off the bench because we're gonna start the young guys. That's and, right. And personally, Russ, I think your better opportunity around the league would be in one of these other places. What those other places are. I don't know, right? Because I'm not looking for any kind of tampering situation, but there are other opportunities for you that I think would suit you better. So let us know, I guess. Well, and for, I also, from what I understand, Russ has the ability to talk to other teams. The Jazz are not going to are not going to have a problem with that. They've told him that. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's why you're seeing Billy Donovan openly talking about him. You're seeing the Clippers openly talking about him. And this story with Kyle Lowry at the Clippers, I don't I, I I don't mean to drop a bomb on me. I don't know how many people saw this. The Heat and the Clippers had a deal done at the deadline for Kyle Lowry, yeah. and they could not get Pat Riley on the phone to approve it. <laughs> so Kyle Lowry did not get traded. And thus it puts Miami in this really awkward position right now. And I think that, to me, that's that's one of the stories at the deadline of a deal that did not get done. Yeah, And nah, I think I mean, it's that's, something... And I think that's why the competition for us is so high. You know, that's another reason, because you look at... You look at Westbrook and what he could do. Do the Clippers could really use Russell Westbrook? And I don't disagree with your logic on Chicago. I think Chicago would greatly benefit. It's you know it's a pretty straightforward path and situation where he would really benefit from being there. But again, the Clippers haven't exactly lit the world on fire. You know, like I know that you know the Reggie deal happened, and you know you did here and there, but bought him out. Yeah, I mean, but you didn't really like make this big foundational deal, and you have you know the Bones Highland thing where Bones is basically saying, in, in you know in his introductory press conference that Jamal Murray isn't talented, and Joker's the best one there. X, Y, and Z, and you know PG and Kawhi are awesome. Like that's great that you added him, but but he's an unknown. Is he somebody that can start a point guard for you? Do you want him starting a point guard? He says he is a point guard. I'm saying I haven't seen a whole lot of that. I've seen more of a two three combo guard. So to me, I just think there's some question marks there. But but ultimately, Russ needs to move his ass on. I don't think that wearing the note is a great fit for him. No, and I, I wonder as we talk NBA basketball on the Monty Show presented by our good friends at Quick Quack Car Wash. You know, all of our NBA talk and our Utah Jazz talk on the show presented by Quick Quack. And I, I tell you this a lot, I get it. 
But you guys, Quick Quack's just a really good experience. And when you go there, you're in and out in five minutes. You know, with all this crazy weather we've had this winter, you can't allow your car to sit in snow and salt. And I'm telling you, Quick Quack's the best car wash. I trust them with my Audi SQ5. High-end German car, because that's yeah. what we do on this show. Uh, and they handle it perfectly. You can just know when you hear Quick Quack car wash, it's a great car wash. The car looks great. But you get great service. You get a smile from them. They, I love the fact that because I'm a member there and, and I pay 20 something dollars a month, that I roll up, they put my license plate into their system. Hey, Monty, how are you? Here's your, your dashboard wipe. Anything else you need? Like they're friendly, they smile, they're wearing a shirt and a tie. You don't ever put a credit card into a machine. Yeah. You're always dealing with a person. And the best part is, you're in and out in five minutes, seven minutes, no matter how busy they are. Five, seven minutes, in, out, done at Quick Quack Car Wash. That's the way you go about doing business with the guys at Quick Quack. And of course, what would this show be without our favorite Quick Quack guy? Can't stop, won't stop. Okay, guys, I'm gonna tell you the secret to impressing my neighbors, the Wyatt coworkers, you name it. I just swing by Quick Quack. It seriously takes two minutes, and people can't stop, won't stop checking me out. Getting a clean car is definitely my best life hack. Kids are messy, camping's dirty, but my truck sure isn't. That's our dude, man. Yeah, that's the guy. I mean, I mean again, and, and, and that's the amazing part about Quick Quack. Like, I know we talk about him all the time, but you just roll through there. It's real easy. Even when they're busy or out in five minutes, they know your name, as he was just saying. Like, you just, you, and, and I'm kind of a car wash snob, and even I go through there. So, like, it's a great experience. You, like, Go and check them out. I'm telling you, it's worth your time. And hey, by the way, if you're just tuning into the show today, maybe you've never seen us before. We're doing an afternoon test run here the next couple of days. We'll be on for another half an hour today. Then tomorrow, you get three full hours of the Monty Show uh, from 4 to 7 um, Central Time. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, or really, it'll be 3 to 6. No, wait. 3 to Hi, how are you? Uh, Hello. This is the Monty Show. We'll be live 3 to 6 tomorrow. <laughs> Hello. What Three time to is six it? Tomorrow. Uh, we're in Lake Tahoe. The Monty Show live in Lake Tahoe celebrating my awesomeness. My birthday is coming up this weekend. Have you had a good trip? Um, I had a wicked, terrible crash yesterday, and I'm flipping feeling it. Uh -huh. um, we were So we took a lesson real quick. Give me three minutes. We took a lesson at Heavenly. We are staying um, in South Lake Tahoe at a great resort. Took a lesson at Heavenly yesterday, and... You pay a lot of money. It's an eight hundred dollar lesson. Uh huh. We didn't need a, a a lesson to teach us how to snowboard. Hey, little Timmy, here's how you strap up your bindings. We're pretty advanced snowboard. Even the guy yesterday is like, "Yeah, I don't need to tell you guys anything. You're advanced riders." Yeah. Like, hey, that's awesome. So then we're we're going. He's like, "Hey, I want you guys to try these different kinds of turns." I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I didn't want to be a jerk and be like, hey, man, no offense. We're just here to figure out where the best trails are. You didn't are. want to tell the instructor not to instruct us. Right, because we only got a lesson so that we could skip the line. Because it, it, when you get a lesson, you skip the line. Mm -hmm. They take you to the front of the line every time. Yes. And we don't know Heavenly the Resort, so he was going to show us around. So anyways, one thing leads to another. He's teaching us all this stuff about, you know, turning with your front foot. So I'm zipping down the mountain 100 miles an hour. Jake and the instructor are probably two, 300 yards behind me. Uh -huh. And I just had a terrible crash. Uh -huh. Like, I, it, The lesson basically was, hey, push your front foot down first. And you ride left foot forward. I do. I ride traditional. Push your left foot down first and then let the board turn for you. Right. That's not what you should do at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> So I was going at a pretty good clip. I pushed my front foot forward and the nose dug into the snow. And dude, I absolutely lit. I don't remember much of the crash. You know when you crash on a snowboard? And I don't know, maybe you haven't. I don't remember much of the crash. What I remember, the last thing I remember is I looked and I could see the ground coming at me. Uh -huh. You know, like the snow, I could see it. But I also remember tumbling I wow. hit the ground and I just remember, I remember in my head, I said, oh, F. Like I was like, oh, mm. and my feet are over my head. And I actually body slammed on the ground and then sat right up into a sitting position with my legs in front of me. Yeah. And I couldn't hear. 
This is how bad this wreck was. And I didn't see it, just so we're clear. No, he was like two, three hundred yards yeah, behind like me. Like you were saying, I was back there. I couldn't hear because I'd hit my my head. My hearing was all ringing. It was ee, that ee. Yes. And I just was, I was scared. It was weird. Yeah. You know how you're sitting on the ground if you've ever had a crash and you're just like. Well, you're just shook. You're intimidated. You're scared. And then I figured out I couldn't breathe. <laughs> and I was just like, so I'm into this breathing technique now thing that I'm trying. Where you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And you do this whole thing to control your, your emotion and your heart rate. I couldn't do it because I had landed. I thought on my cell phone because my cell phone sits in my chest pocket. But I had landed like this. I'd pulled my arms and body slammed myself. Yeah. And so like my whole chest was just lit. And so I just sat there and I, you know, the funny thing is I, I just closed my eyes and I thought about my wife. I was like, dude, she would be so upset if I, if, if she was here right now. And, <laughs> and then I just heard somebody come up from behind me and I heard like, you know, a hard stop on a snowboard. I heard somebody hard stop behind me and it just kind of woke me up. And Jake was, I think you were on my right. I was. And then the instructor was like back here. Yeah. Hanging out. And they thought I was just sitting there waiting for him. Now, I had seen, I had seen, I thought, like in snowboarding, when you heel grind or you heel stop, sometimes you heel stop too hard and you just sit down. It doesn't hurt. It, like, it yeah. just happens sometimes. I thought that's what you had done because there was, there was a, a cloud of snow that had just kind of popped up, but that's not unusual. That happens fairly regularly. You can even do it for fun if you want to. And so I saw that and I saw you sitting there. I was like, oh, he must have just sat down, probably didn't get up because he was kind of like waiting for us, wasn't in a real hurry to get going. He knew we were back there a little bit. And I roll up and I was like, are you okay? And you like were just in another, you were like on Mars or something. I don't, I don't know where you were. And then Buddy rolled up behind you. You're correct. He did roll up behind you and was trying to figure out what happened. And you weren't yeah. real able to describe I couldn't talk. what exactly happened. When they came up, I don't even remember what the guy said. He said something to me and I, I tried to talk and I just didn't have the breath. I couldn't breathe. And so I couldn't get words out. Yeah. And so I just remember. Yeah. Like waving my arm a little bit and then it just started coming back and the fear went away because I didn't have any pain. Uh -huh. Nothing really hurt. I, 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 I felt like my, you know, that wreck feeling when your goggles are like, yeah, they're all across your face. And so and it's uncomfortable. Like, and I, I didn't want to take off my helmet. Like I just, so I just sat there for a minute and then you guys got up and went and I didn't get up and I was just checking myself out. Like, yeah, today, ooh, man, like my, my left tricep rotator cuff and my left quad are just crushed. Yeah. My rear obliques hurt. Like, so we didn't ride today. We were just chilling today. Well, and it's also a million degrees. It's 40, it was 45 degrees at one point. All the snow is melting in Tahoe off of the roofs. And, yeah. and the issue with that is our plan was to go snowboard tomorrow, but now it's going to be like 16 degrees overnight. So all that wet snow is going to be frozen snow. Yeah. So we're going to have to try and figure that out. But anyway, we're in Lake Tahoe for my birthday. Yeah. Um, that's what we're doing here these two days. So we're on in the afternoon. But there's a real good chance we're going to stick and stay three to six. Yeah. Monday through Friday. Like it's, it's worked really well. Think. Let us know what you think. I mean, we want your opinion. And I don't know. How should we announce the new sponsor that we, we signed I up mean, now? We can do it now. We can do it tomorrow. Like, I mean, it is Monday. I am super excited. Yeah. Yeah. about this it is and we're going to need you guys to support us we're going to need your help on this it's one it's an easy like, one though i promise you. it is, it is an easy one. we'll easy. do it you know we'll do it we'll do it tomorrow and we'll really we'll be yeah i i it is so hard to wait to announce it but we have a huge new sponsor on the show starting tomorrow yeah and there's somebody that we use every day it's something that you guys Somebody are going to love. That you know. It's going to get you free products. Like it's, yeah, you know who it is. Like it's a big brand. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's going to be amazing. All right. Let's get some of your comments in here. Um, let's see. Teddy Wayman says, uh, glad you're okay, man. Yeah, Teddy, dude. Woo. Man. Yeah. Louis Capasso says riding uh, the ice is not so nice. No, it's no, not. No, it's not. No, 
No, it's not. Lewis also says those goofy footed peeps are just riding wrong. Our instructor yesterday yes, was, was goofy. goofy footed. Yes. And he did a good job. I don't always do so well getting off of lifts, turning to my left. So one of the things I struggle with is you, you stand up off the chair and I go straight and then I'll like toe grind to a stop. He taught me how to t- uh, heel grind to a stop yesterday. How to turn to my left. Like, it's an idiotic thing. But if you are if you know, you know. Yeah. Uh, Brady Cook says, I have crashed a few times snowboarding and it's not fun at all. It, I, I have not had that feeling of dread. Right. Or fear in the past. It was weird. It, it's funny what you think about in those situations. Like, I immediately thought about my wife. Like, I don't know why, but Mrs. Monty was just in my head when I was sitting there. Uh-huh. Like, I, I just, I don't know why. I have no, but yeah. even just shrugging like that, like yeah. I need to go to my chiropractor when I get home. Yeah. Like, Ooh, I need to get cracked. Uh, uh-huh. um, you popped, but it was just, yeah, it was, it was, that was interesting. I've never felt like that before, but you know what else is in my head? My Mrs. Monty has a broken arm right now that she's recovering from our guy. Eric Witzick broke his leg. One of the, the people we work with at the Grizzlies broke her knee. Um, I know somebody else that broke their wrist. Like, there's been a lot of injuries in my circle this year. Uh huh. I was also, I think that's also been on my mind. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's, you know, you have to know your, your, your limits. Like we like to go fast, but it's fast within your limit. And I yeah. think that it's, it is, you only crash because you were trying to do something that you don't normally do. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. You just, that's just the reality of the situation. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Jeff Johnson. Good morning. Good afternoon. I almost said good morning. Hello. Good afternoon. Jeff. He says Monty scorpion the hell out of that mountain. <laughs> I don't know what I, I wish what you did. I what, wish I could, you could have seen it. I think the way, the way you're describing it, I, I haven't fallen exactly like that, but I have, I, that, there have been times where like you're making a hard toe turn and you you just are at too steep of an angle and your feet fall out and you hit the ground. I mean, every snowboarder has done that. And I think what happened to you though, was that you had shifted your weight. You were in the turn, you had shifted your weight to the front foot, which put your, your, the toe or the, the, uh, head of your board, the nose of your board into the snow and it caught and it flipped you. Yeah. And that's what happens. It's terrible when you're when your feet are up over your head. Yeah. I mean that's you're an awful you're, you're not in a you're you're you, all you can see is the sky and what no one talks about is that when you crash and you're airborne it's quiet for however long you're in the air and you don't know when the ground is coming. You know, you just are along for the ride Ooh. at that point. Yeah, and I and you know what to uh Jorge's comment here you got concussed should take an MRI. I I, the weird thing is, I I didn't feel concussed at all. I knew I had hit my head because I saw it and I felt it, but I just I, I had no dizziness. I had no vision. I had no none of the typical. I never lost my vision. None of that. I just could not flipping. Bri- I think the air is what got sucked out of me. I think that's what my biggest issue was is hitting the ground. I have, I haven't, knock on wood, dude, I haven't crashed in years, dude. Uh-huh. Like we, and I'm not even being braggadocious. We're pretty good riders. Like we ride safely. I know how to stop myself. I know how to, I know how to fall. You know, I know I instinctually, I pull my arms in. Like I know how to, how to protect myself, but dude, there's just some times where some shit happens really fast and you, there's just nothing you're going to do about that. Yeah. I mean, and it, it, that one was, that was one of those. Scott Taylor uh, says, Suns in four series is, is, is. <laughs> thank you for the $5 tip, but your guy Durant. And now we'll see who did they flip? They flipped somebody um, who is going to go to Terrence a different Ross. team. Terrence Ross. Yeah. Bucket getter. Yeah, dude. Three, 38% from three. Bucket getter. Highly athletic, big time transi- transition player. Definitely an important pickup. And I think that, you know, you look at uh, who did who did Denver? Denver got Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson. Yeah. So, I mean, you're countering what Denver's doing, you know, and, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm i with, I don't remember guy's name, but I'm, I'm with you, dude. Like, I think that, you know, if the Suns stay healthy, they're, they're going to be in a great spot. Yeah. Hey, yeah, we'll see. I, I don't know about Durant. Durant's got to stay healthy. Yeah. Now you got to stay healthy, but he's gotten a long rest here too. I mean, yeah. there's a reason he's not coming back till after the break. Totally agree. Ron Nolan says, Monty, it's obvious you're all, uh, you're still suffering from a concussion base camp pizza company at heavenly serves spaghetti in a bowl. It makes you feel better. Thank Dude, you, we Ron. had, Thank we you. had, and I think Mrs. Monty went to base camp 
the first night we were here. Uh -huh. um, Jake and I had a huge argument the first night we were here over YouTube, by the way. Um, and I didn't get to enjoy my base camp pizza. Well, maybe but that's where amazing. we go tonight. It's amazing. No, Mrs. Monty's actually booked us into a really good restaurant for tonight. Oh, okay, are you nice. Looking at on your phone there, kid. Just updates. Did you get an alert that I missed? No. Um, Riley O'Brien. Riley O'Brien, right there. Where? Keep going down. Yeah. Right there. There it is. Did I understand? Uh, right, you guys might start doing your show during the day. Yes. Yes, we are seriously considering flipping the three to six. And it's a health and wellness decision, if we're being honest. There's I mean, a couple of factors at play. Yeah. One, we're having trouble because what we do, our day basically is 3.50 in the morning. We get out of bed. Jake's usually at my house at 4.30. We're at the Maverick Center at, at 5 in the morning, 4.50 usually. Um, and then from 4.50 to 4 o'clock, it's all about the show. Whether we're doing the show cutting the show, shooting shorts, selling the show, whatever we sell our show on our own. So until four o'clock in the afternoon, what are we not doing? We're not working out. We're not spending quality time with our family. We're not getting quality sleep. So what, what would change is we would probably get up at five, be at the gym by five 30, be at the Maverick center by eight, do all of our work before the show, do the show three to six, come home and have like an actual normal life. Yeah. Which would be crazy. Not having to go to bed at eight. You know, the word, the thing that I hate most is I'm falling asleep at seven 30 at night. Exhausted, dude. Like I'm cooked. I'm and I'm with you too. This isn't like a age well, specific you, you thing. Get it's up just that exhausting, early, dude. But the thing that's really helped me, the cold, the cold plunging, the cold showers yeah. have made a huge difference in my ability to go to bed at the right time. But I'll tell you here in Tahoe, I'm waking up at the exact same time. Yeah. I am waking up at the exact same time. Clockwork, bro. And it's, be I'm telling you, the cold showering has made a huge difference in my life. And Mrs. Monty and I have talked about getting a cold tub like Teddy. Teddy Wayman is a guy that's got this cold tub in his backyard. And I've, I, I would be into doing that. But the cold shower, I, it's, it's made a huge difference for me. Uh, let's see. Riley O'Brien says, totally understandable, but we will miss the show being from the start of the day. But regardless of time, you guys go on. I'm here. I appreciate that. I man. appreciate you, Riley. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Greg Hawkins says, I almost died going down a blue run at Solitude when I was younger. Lost control of my board and went through a huge patch of trees. Wow. Eight, eight foot drop on the other side, rode through it and stuck the landing. There Holy you go, cow. Dude. There you go. That's awesome. Uh, Brady Cook says, uh, Chris Paul wants them to sign Carmelo Anthony. I don't understand how Carmelo's not under contract. Yeah, I mean, the problem Shocking. is defense. The problem is defense. And I know it's gotten better, but, you know, the reality is, is you got to be able to play defense to be a 3 and D guy. Look at that. Another Mrs. Monty question. Fellas, love the afternoon show. Will Mrs. Monty return more often? Well, she hates doing the show. Yeah, know, Mrs. So. Monty doesn't want to be on the show anymore. Right, right. She says our body odor is just too much for her to... Stank to handle uh i would think so my the issue isn't time for mrs monty as in like time of day she's actually got like a a female adult job yeah adult. like she's like an adult yeah. we're children mrs monty is the the adult in the room like yes. she has like a real job but yeah i think she she loves doing the show yeah you know? uh M. Morris one says perfect schedule. It really would. Uh, M. Mike P says, guys, I just I spent ten years in the Marines. Getting up that early is bad for you. Trust me, it's rough, man. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. And I'm. So, I want to live forever. Yeah. And the little things that it does, and this is how cold showering and cold plunging came in, because my habits were slipping. Like I can go six, eight, ten weeks eating perfectly. But then one day I'm tired and I get derailed and it's just your mental toughness shrinks and your ability to execute shrinks when you're doing five and a half, six hours of sleep every night. Yeah. And then the problem is it wastes your weekend as well because you get up at that same time. You want to go to bed at that same time because Monday morning is a real ball buster. Yeah, it is. When you, when you stay up till 10 and you're sleep, I can't sleep until even eight o'clock anymore yeah i don't like today we just chilled all day i have not left our our condo at all today because i just i feel lethargic when i sleep that long you know like it, it and today i i actually feel much better right now than i have all day right but 
you just don't feel as good. That, that there's a, a certain fog that sets in. Uh -huh. That's why we try to travel so much. That's why we go to Hawaii once a year. That's why we take weeks off. We go to spring training. We come to Tahoe. Because like, you need that reset button. And try, that's why we're thinking about doing that. Uh, Renee Roca, what's up? Says, uh, a little later show allows some sports stories to develop as well. Yeah, love that. Uh, Matt Ritson says, I love, uh, I love the show. Don't mind time show morning or afternoon is watching. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you, Matt. I appreciate you, Matt. Um, Eric and Riley says, talking with Raphael morning show. Could be. Could be. Could be. Um, Jorge says, it's good you guys make some changes. We will still watch. Thank I you, appreciate sir. that. appreciate that. Uh, BS says Pac-12 is a dumpster fire. I agree. It is. I agree. It is. McKinley Cutler says, I remember the first time I went down a black diamond, uh, I yard sailed, lost everything but my pants and my boots. <laughs> Dude, like I used to love diamond, riding diamond. Back in the day when I lived in San Francisco and I was doing a story for KGO and I got to come up here and do first tracks with um, a ski patrol. And those guys are just rocket ships on the mountain. Riding a diamond with ski patrol is as intimidating as hell. Yeah. But I did it. I have no desire to do it again. Yeah. Like it's blue, I, like advanced blues are just more fun to me. Like when you get into diamond, yes. like I'm not, I, and I've been saying this recently and I feel like it's pretty spot on. I'm not out there to win X games, man. I'm not, I'm out there just to have a good time, you know, Push my uncomfortableness a little bit, not a, a lot. Bit. I don't want to feel like I'm in danger, but I like to go fast. I like to feel that because I, I, I like speed on a snowboard is kind of you can't really replicate it. The feeling of that. I skiers, agree. Skiers know the same feeling like you just you don't get it anywhere else. And so I'm just out there to have fun, man. Yep. Totally agree. Uh, the Monty show presented by our good friends at barbecue pit stop this hour. Make sure you get to BBQ I want to play this Jackson Mahomes video. Yeah. Because I don't know, first of all, I know we've talked a lot about baby names on this show. Okay, like Chris Lee, all, you, right. I, we get it, right? But Patrick Mahomes named his kids Sterling and Bronze. And he said that he likes the steel names and the metal names and he's going to continue it. Okay. Cool, man. Look, Sterling and Bronze, I wouldn't do it. I don't have an issue with Sterling. Sterling's a fairly common name. Yeah, you Sterling's know, like, actually Sterling's a cool name. Yeah, bronze I don't mind. though. I and I'm still trying to figure out. You're sure that bronze is on Buddy's birth certificate? Yeah, he's a third. He is Patrick Bronze Lamar Mahomes the third. Uh huh. And yes, it is on his birth certificate. Yeah, I I can't. Bronze is just odd to me. I can't I, do I, it. I, I'm not. I'm not a big fan. I like. What are we gonna get next? Platinum. What are we gonna get next? Gold. Like. What are we gonna get next? Copper. Come on, dude. But then, but then there's this whole thing with his brother. Right. Patrick Mahomes' brother is just an odd dude. Right. So I will play this video for you, and then we shall react. Slap on me now. What are we doing? What are we doing? Can I can I just point out in this video? It's right in front of like their wall of fame, their hall of fame, whatever we're gonna call their it. They're great the, their great team wall. Yeah, like it's right in front of like a major thing for the organ. Like what are you doing? Start a like, rock. Do it. I just don't do it, dude. Like, and then there were, and we can't play the video because it's it's for the Super Bowl. But he had this awkward moment where he was doing some TikTok selfie behind his brother being interviewed on NFL Network. Yeah, and he was doing like some stupid dance. This is my problem with Patrick Mahomes. Not only did you name your kid Bronze. Your brother's a weirdo. Your wife tries to be this social media sensation thing. Yeah. You're the like Patrick Mahomes is the dude. Yeah. He's a likable guy. They're doing the whole Disneyland thing. You're a two time Super Bowl MVP and champion. Control your brother. Like at the freaking facility, you're yeah. doing. This stupid dance at the facility. Slap on me now. 
Throw it in front of your all time team. Throw it back. Come on. Like, what are we doing, man? And the other issue is yesterday, at one point, he's on the field in a t shirt and sweat shorts. Yeah. At the Super Bowl. Really? Like, I mean, it's just classic, you know, there's no standard because I'm Buddy's brother. I'm like, tired. I am tired of the, oh, well, let me go viral. Like, that's what this is. Yeah. This is, I want to be famous. My brother's a football player. Let me take advantage of his name. Dude, it's it's just, yeah. yeah. I, I, I just don't like it. Like, I, I can appreciate and respect the idea of, hey, I'm Patrick Mahomes' brother, and I have all this stuff that I'm doing, like <laughs> a business or whatever. Like Greg Hawkins, WTF was that? What did you just make us watch? Why are his shorts so tight? I have so many questions here. <laughs> dude, you're not wrong, man. And that's what I'm saying. It's just an awkward, right? like, dude, like, what are we oh doing? Oh, my God. Man? And then Cam Harrison's like, WTF? Exactly. San Diego State, Glenn says pewter is next. Then cadmium, cadmium. Yeah, I, I dude, on. I, yeah. Platinum. You got if you're going bronze and and again I like I like Sterling. Yeah, I think Sterling's a cool name. It is bronze and platinum. Nah, bronze nah. and cadmium. Come on now. Yeah, that's rough. Oh, Mrs. Monty woke up from her nap. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, yes. Um. Let's see. Cam Harrison says afternoon shows. You guys will steal the sports radio station audience in Utah. LOL. Monty show is the best. Appreciate that. Hey, if that happens, it happens. You know what I mean? I mean, we're, we're yeah. 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 Um, Riley O'Brien says, how much would we need to get to pay to get Jack Rumsey to recreate this dude? You guys, maybe that's what we do. Maybe some, Oh dude, wait until you, the new sponsor. We have all kinds of opportunities. Oh yes. Oh my God. Um, let's see. K. Nuren says, uh, love starting my morning with the hacks on YouTube. Appreciate you. Giggity says, who wants to see Jake recreate that trash? I do. Nah. I'm... But you see, this is a problem, though. You'll never even try it. Ah, sorry, guys. The camera's overheating. Sorry, dude. I, you know, I think the show's got to end. Sorry. You wouldn't even try this. No, I don't dance, dude. I know my limitations. Man's got to know his limitations. So let me get this right. I sing, I rap, you and don't I sing. do the gritty. You, you don't do the gritty. No. I do. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. No, you what don't. do you mean I don't? I've seen myself do the gritty. Okay, well, I haven't seen it. Okay. Okay, fine. Uh, Jeff, oh, hey, Jeff Bevan. What's up, my guy? You need Jeff. beard product? Jeff Bevan, in all honesty, Jeff Bevan's got this really cool boutique beard care brand. Jeff, plug yourself, bro. Um, it's a really cool his thing like yeah. jeff bevan is an entrepreneur to the max i believe you have vending machines he's got affect beard company there you go affect beard company jeff bevan good to see you he says casey will only put up with it as long as patrick is producing once he isn't they will shut that down right jake heaps slash russell wilson oh right, my god LeVar. oh my god that's so true good to see you bevan uh boyd lake says social media degrades mental health for too many people truth truth yeah. Um, let's see. Jorge says, come on, Monty, burn that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, McKinley Cutler, Gen Z is thirsty as F for clout and fam. We'll do some crazy crap. See? Yeah. And I said this about millennials too. It's I not think true millennials, about millennials. Nah, you don't think so? Nah. Okay. Gen Z is the thirsty crowd. Uh, Renee Roca says that wasn't dancing. You got this. See, nah. Dude, come on, bro. No, nah, I'm good. I'm good. How much man. would it take for you to I, try I, this? I, yeah, I don't know. Come on. I, I don't know, man. Uh, Boyd Lake says the hex on YouTube. 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 Uh, Teddy Wayman says, LOL, I don't dance either, Jake. Yeah, thanks. Come on. Uh, Greg Hawkins says, please do, please do make Jake recreate it that dance. It says do not. Please do. No, it says do. No, if I cover up the nine, you can't see it. I think it says do not. Thank you, Greg. Greg. Uh, Ron Nolan says, you should never wear white performing flatulence. You never know when a, a shark will rear its ugly head. See what he did there? He worked in rear. But I like that. That's very true. Uh, Jake, how much will it cost me to see you do it? No. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. To be determined. Will you do it at spring training if Giggity meets us at the Cubs game? Will you do it at spring training? <laughs> Maybe. I'll think about it. Come on, man. I'll think about it, bro. I'll buy you big rig pasta. Uh -huh. yeah. One time I'll let you I'll, break I'll spaghetti I'll think about it. That's an improvement. I will That's think about no. it. I know you. That's a no. You won't do it. I know you won't do it. 
Uh, Scott Price, what's up, Scott? At least it wasn't him and his wife. Both are cringe. Really? Really? Uh, Holabilly says, WTF, please no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Maury Alvarez, our Floridian, says, I think that Duck Season will pay $100 to do it, right? But he doesn't exist. He doesn't pay. He doesn't pay. DF Aust says, the only thing that may save the pack is to remove Kleav Kak from office and find themselves a business executive like your mark to take the lead. Yeah. I think it's too late. I do. Boyd Lake appreciates the shark rears its ugly head. Yes. Does who come on, man in the comments who wants to see Jake do this Dan? That's so easy. That's no, not, not even dancing. Please. If I do it, will you do it? Maybe. That's a no. You'll go first and I'll go second. Right. Because I don't trust you as right. far as I can shart you. Right. See what I did there? As far as you can shart me. See what I did there? That's what I'm saying. Uh, all right. Before we get out of here, can we talk about the UFOs? Yeah. What do you guys think this is? Because you know on this show, if you're a longtime listener, you know that I love talking me some UFOs. Right. Yeah. Yep. Do you believe that these are alien UFOs that the U.S. military keeps shooting down? Okay, so yes and no. Yes, because they're talking about cylindrical shapes and one look like an octagon. Well, and, and don't forget the one that cut out their communication systems. One cut out a communication system. Here's my trouble, though. Is if you're a UFO and you have all, you're so advanced and you're mm -hmm. from an alien world, are you, how are you getting shot down by an F-22? Like with all due respect to the F-22, UFOs can do things that we don't understand. Allegedly. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I have trouble with. So is this more just odd shaped balloons? Is it, you know what I mean? Like it just, I don't know, man. Mrs. Monty just did the dance in the doorway right here in front of Jake. Yeah, well, she's not on camera. There's no pressure. You know what you I mean? You guys, we're at 98, like, 98 likes today. Please hit the like button. Uh, let's. If there's 134 of you watching. Get us to 150. Let's go. I don't believe these are alien UFOs, yeah. first of all. I think this is probably Steve and Kevin flying their cool little drone that looks like a UFO, and then they got caught and somebody shot it down. I feel like this is copycats okay. doing this stuff. Here's my only thing with that, though. I don't disagree, but here's the only thing. These were high altitude. Yeah. Like, I'm talking about 40, 50,000 feet, which any consumer product is not doing. You know what I mean? Like, you I would agree. have to have, you, like, you'd have to have made one or, like, some sort of rigging or something. I don't know, but I don't know. I just, I do agree with what Trudeau said. There's definitely a pattern here. Because now you're getting Alaska, a couple in Canada, some, Great Lakes. you know, the Great Lakes. Lake like Huron. there's something going on. Something. Do you believe in alien life UFOs? Do you believe that aliens from another solar system or Deep Space 26, Star Trek evolution? Uh -huh. Do you think they're flying through portals in time or coming through the Milky Way and ending up flying around the planet? Uh, I, I don't think there's, I don't think there's aliens in the traditional sense. I think that there's, I'm, I'm more of the idea that maybe there's a chance, you know, that there, I, I do believe there's other life out there. I'll first say that. Let me just start there. I do believe there's other life yeah, out there. I think the, the space is, is so vast that we don't even understand it. Our mind li quite literally just can't comprehend it. And so the idea that there's nothing out there just seems silly to me. Now, I also think it's silly the way we've depicted aliens. Like, our image of aliens is just what we've come up with. Like, that's just what our brain I has don't sort believe of... there's E.T. riding in yeah, somebody's bicycle you know bicycle what I mean? Basket. Like, I don't, I don't think that that's what we're talking about. I, I do think, and again, I know I got mocked and everyone says it's dumb, but... No, the, they say you're the, dumb. Yeah, I know. Big but difference. The, this, the story that they told in Interstellar about, about our understanding of time... Okay, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? I'm just supporting you. No, you're not. You're I'm petting, supporting you're you. petting me in a weird fashion and it's awkward. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> the story they told in Interstellar about time and in understanding, dude, you're going to cross the line and I will turn this show off. Go ahead, I'm kidding. The fact that I I do feel like there are other dude, you're 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 sidetracking me from the take here. 
All I'm trying to say is I don't think we fully understand how we can manipulate time. I do think that's a thing where like there are there. Are, and if you've watched the movie, you know what I mean? I think there are other ways that, you know, you can like what? move through time. It's, it's, it's hard to understand. Like in, in interstellar, they, they, sort of depict this situation where they're dealing with black holes and you know that like i can't remember who came up with it but this whole concept that you can like if you're you're going from a to b in a straight line but like i think it's a black hole allows you to basically fold that like a piece of paper to get there faster does that make sense where you can fold onto itself and you can just cut through that so you think that humans can manipulate time I think that something out there can. So you believe there is a another dimension where past could and be. future lives? It could be, yeah. It could be. I just think we don't know. But I'm saying that I don't think aliens look like what we've depicted them. I don't think that that's crazy. I think that is... I don't know that today's human can in, ingest that. That's what I'm saying. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, like as far as these, these aliens or UFOs or whatever, I do think there's a reason they're being hidden. Like, they're, we're not publicly talking about what these were they shot down an object notice they don't say what the object is okay yeah. well what is the what is the deal that's what intrigues me i'm not saying there's a conspiracy okay, or they're hiding go. something but i do think that it's interesting that they're not talking about it look at teddy wayman teddy wayman says those aren't ufos although i have seen one in my life there you go see teddy's in on it tell the story teddy who also says, I love Interstellar, great movie. It is phenomenal. Go Tigers. Go Black 45 says it's a wormhole theorized by Einstein. Einstein. That's It was Einstein. Okay, yes. Okay. Um, if life was common, someone somewhere would have visited us. And yet, where are they? That's the thing I can't get past. If there is so much alien life in the universe... How come they haven't come and put a vacuum in our brains yet? But they're you're theorizing that we could see them or that we would know they're here or that like you know what I, like I just think but there's so many possibilities. Had, you don't I don't know. Are they weaponized? Are they colonizers? Like I don't know what they would be, but we would know in some way, shape, or form. I believe it's out there. I don't believe that it's like, you know, Zygod and his yeah. rocket ship, you know, killed Captain Kirk and now we're all screwed. Yeah. I don't believe the movie version. I don't believe the characterized version of what an alien has been told to us as. Right. Yeah. yeah. I do believe that there is something out there. Well, and it just came out too. I can't remember the name of or what they're calling the planet, but there is a planet. It just came out, I think, a couple of days ago that they found in a galaxy they were calling next door, like a neighborhood in our neighborhood. That is almost exactly like Earth. It has water. It's they right. they rated right, it right, like ninety eight percent inhabitable. Like so, that's what I'm saying. There are other planets out there. It's just a matter of life. That's all it is. Uh, Holabilly makes what I think is a really good point. Most people wouldn't be able to handle the truth, which is why everything is kept hush hush. Yeah, and I that's, think that's and a big I'm, part. And again, of it. I want to be really clear. I'm not trying to sit here and say there's some conspiracy or like we're going down the Alex Jones route. I just. I don't think I've said that. I think Mrs. That Monty is in the I, background. Being I think pissed. that I think that there's a, whether it's because the public couldn't handle it or they're not ready or I don't know. But if it was just an airplane, we would have said they shot down an airplane. You you see what I'm saying? Like if it was another Chinese balloon, we would have been happy but to say it was another don't Chinese know what balloon. It is. Then they should say we don't know what it is. I think they have homie. The homie, the the guy at the Pentagon said we don't know what it is. Mm hmm. Yeah, we don't. That's why it's called a UFO. It's an unidentified flying object. And the guy at the Pentagon from so the let me get this gallery, right. let me get this said right. it's not necessarily alien. So we're happy to say we don't know what it is and cause a stir up and cause all the conspiracy theorists to come out. But we're not. But we don't want to say what we think it might be or what. Like, I don't know. I just think we our government tends to go tends to withhold until they know exactly what it is yes, they and that's should. fine that's fine i just think it's interesting like i said i agree with what trudeau said there's a pattern here you don't just all of a sudden have five six I how many other it's been and i know i'm not trying to be controversial with this at all i think the other problem is is it's so much of this flies in the face of christianity which is the predominant wow. belief yeah. in our society yeah and i think there are so many people who just We'll, we'll be like, hey, I'm relying on God to protect us. I trust in God. I totally understand that.
but there's so much that faith has taught certain sects of people that we would they those people would never be able to to uh, ingest the idea that there's another universe or that there is a you know time travel because you folded a piece of paper and you know you said yeah bling blam bling and you went 88.8 .8 miles an hour or whatever it is yeah people wouldn't be able to to wrap their heads around that because we have ingrained so many religions in the people's minds mm. so i think there's this con what is it this confluence of reasons this meeting of reasons of why I don't know that we ever find out what those things are. It's why people think there's alien life forms at area 51. Like, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. I, I could just, be I do think the thing you can't get away from though is as interesting. It's happening now. And uh, you know, the, the, the spy balloon thing goes down. Yep. And then now all of a sudden it's just like more of these have come up. Well, why was this happening before? And it just didn't get talked about. That's what I find interesting about these stories. Like, yep. and again, I'm not saying they're aliens. I'm just saying I think it's interesting. The spy balloon thing happened, and now we've got like four or five of them, and it's involving Canada. But I, I, but like, I have no, I have no trouble believing that China is just poking the bear. I know I said that last week. Yeah, no, I agree. But yeah. I think a lot of this because the thing that people don't want to believe is that satellites already have the capability that these balloons have. Right and more they can see in great detail these balloons so far have just been data capturing and the issue with that is we don't believe that though so far that those balloons were live streaming so they're really limited again you're just sending up a test balloon to see what we're going to do yeah okay so i'm not necessarily worried about the balloons I want to understand, were these UFOs, unidentified flying objects, were they weaponized? Did they have some kind of chemical in them? Did they have some kind of, I want to know what they are. I want to know what they were capable of. And that's of. my point. If they were more balloons, they would have said that. Yep. Can we agree on that? Kay Nuren says they're coming from Antarctica. Right. Um, Timothy H. says it's Chinese spy equipment getting shot down. We'll see. I'm not saying that's not, that's it could not be. true. It could be. You know, uh, go Tigers. Go Black says either we are totally alone in the universe, which I don't think we are, or there is life everywhere. Both are terrifying prospects to paraphrase Arthur Clark. Well, True. dude, if we're alone in the universe, good luck. I, I mean, that's terrifying because you, you just, we're reliant on ourselves now and I don't trust humans. I know that's crazy. The, 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 What's the right way to say it? The terribleness that lives in human beings scares the hell out of me. Uh -huh. What's going on in Ukraine? Terrifying. What's, you know, the stories you hear that are unreported from Ukraine are terrifying. That like, I, I just, humans are not always good people. Humans are, there are so many people on this earth, not to, you know, to paraphrase or make light of, but who just want to watch the world burn. Yeah. That terrifies me. And I'm not saying that, you know, if if Jimmy and Dan found a way to live on planet Paraflex or whatever it would be called. Okay, cool. But all I'm saying is, I just hope at some point we all stop trying to murder everybody and stop <laughs> trying to conquer everybody and everything and annex Crimea and murder Ukrainians. And, and all of that is dwarfed by the idea that, you know, this planet's dying. That's yeah. the reality. We're killing it. And that's the unfortunate part. Ron Nolan says, I want to, uh, I once rode in an elevator with Stephen Hawking before the lecture on baby black holes at the U. His nurse was a babe and she was definitely not from this planet. A gorgeous alien. There you go. See, there so you go. Aliens are real. We've decided it. Yeah. You know, uh, Tanner says, well, the Bible does teach that God helps those who help themselves. I don't know, man. Tanner, you're pissing off Mrs. Monte. Brent I'm just Burnett telling you. says life energy is in all things, just a matter of what form. Finding life form here and there will always exist. Understand who we are is the real story. Agreed. Nobody I knows. Agree with that. Uh, Greg Hawkins says tinfoil hat time. Some aliens may have developed interstellar travel long ago and visited Earth already, but it was during the Triassic period and or the Triassic period or something and they left. Yeah, sure. Could be. 
Yeah. Could I think absolutely it's a fascinating be. conversation. Could absolutely be. I don't know. I think it is a fascinating conversation, and I appreciate everybody who yeah. has partaken in it. All right, what are we doing for dinner tonight? But we're going to a really nice restaurant tonight. We are. Actually. So I'm excited about that. Tomorrow on the show, we are going to make a major announcement. Yes. Right off the top of the show. Yep. Be here, be square. You know what I'm saying? Be here. Or be square. Or be square. Three yeah. o'clock mountain time tomorrow. We'll be on three to six tomorrow. We'll do three full hours. Um, make sure you're here for that. We'll have a full recap of the jazz game, um, in which the jazz are winning 53, 51 at the half. How about Laurie marketing? Here's a shocker. Oh, a five from three, but he's got 17 points. Anybody notice that Talon Horton Tucker, all of a sudden is getting more minutes. Funny how that works, huh? Funny how that works. And Chiboy, uh, Ochai Agbaji, 13 minutes, three points, three boards. There you go. Not bad. So there you have it. Yeah. Um, we'll have a lot more on the Jazz tomorrow. Obviously, we'll have an update for you on the Russell Westbrook situation. We might try to convince Monty to, Mrs. Monty to join us for the non-sports stories, although she won't probably because she, again, says we stink. Right. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, please hit the like button. Thank you so much for being here. We enjoyed being on in the afternoon. Until tomorrow. You got to hit the FTB button. Yeah, I got you. Until tomorrow, say goodbye, Jake. Goodbye, Jake.